Hello. Looks like I'm on. Okay. How's it going, everyone? Long time no see, I suppose. <laughs> so we've got Adam, David, and Wilhelm. Wilhelm. <clears throat> I was getting that one wrong. Rob, Dave, Ian. Excellent. Adam, I forgot to press record and sold up half a project. Damn. I hate it when it happens. Harold, how's it going? Right. We've got some stuff to fix today. In fact, I've got a pile of stuff to fix. I've got two more things on the way from eBay. Um, they're obviously not arrived yet, but they're, they're coming. One of the things I've been wait, wanting to get for a long time, and I finally um, bit the bullet of the cost, I suppose. So you'll find out what that is in due course. <coughs> And just a pre-warning, I may have a coughing fit because you guys probably remember, or well, some of you will do anyway, I had COVID uh, three months ago now. I'm still not over it. Sometimes I still have coughing issues. So much fun. Anyway, so. Only 8 o'clock over there. All right. Yeah, the whole. I lose track of what time it is in other countries like that because of daylight savings time changes and things like that. Am I going to put it to, to the vote today? Well, there's one thing I want to do. I've already committed that that's what I want to do today. So we'll do that first. And after that, because um, I'm sure there'll be time, then we can look at something else and. Um, Try and maybe maybe we'll do a vote. I've got several things sitting here. Had a month ago and I'm still coughing. Yeah, um, I mean it comes and goes. My one, my cough. The um, I, I basically I had COVID. Um, and I was sort of coming right. It's like two weeks later. I was just, oh, just just a cough. That was it. And then I got a cold. So I was basically sick for three weeks straight. I thought more than that actually. And then I had another cold. Um, two weeks ago and that was really bad it's like got into my lungs and stuff as well so it all came back again so yeah it's not been much fun ever since I COVID might have had lung issues so yeah anyway go on you need to know what I bought yeah you'll find out you'll find out in time caps um, no no caps well, kind of, but no. <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find out what that is, Wilhelm. Wilhelm. Oh, jeez. I need to pronounce that correctly. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so you'll find out in time. That'll be, once it arrives, I mean, it's probably going to be weeks before that features on the channel, especially because I've got about a month ahead on videos still. I've been catching up because I haven't been recording very much recently because I've been sick and stuff, so and been busy with other things. So I've um, I, I'm still quite a way ahead, but I've, I I was like three months ahead, and now I'm only about a month ahead. So um, I need to start thinking about getting more videos recorded so I don't fall too far behind again. In case things get busy. Um, YouTube's got this little, I don't know, heart symbol, right, for the chat. And it always covers up the end of the last line of chat. So, like, Rob's posted a comment. I can't read it all because this little symbol was over the top of it. I have to wait till the next one comes in and I can read it. Ugh, silly. Um, just go over similar shit to you, but as for... See if you only know if you're yours as far as I can see. 
<laughs> I have to wait till someone comes again. Anyway, there we go. Even though if you have if you test for it and you never have, right? Yeah, well, I had for for work, and work had a had a policy. You know, the had the seven day stand down. Um, if you had COVID, and I actually got better just before the government cut off that seven day stand down. So I actually got it just in time to get the, the week off. <laughs> if I'd been a week later, I would have missed it. Yeah. Can I move it? I don't know. No. It's not Clive, no. It's not Clive, no, it's not Clive. <laughs> my beard's way too short to be Clive. I think it's my chair as well, I'm not sure. Well, barely. <laughs> anyway, so yes, we're going to fix something. So, let's just uh, go over there. There we go. We've got this thing here. You know, look at that. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll do this to you. Any better? So that's what we're going to look at is our thing. I've already shown it on the channel in the mailbag video. So. 34788. I do have one of those. I haven't sold it, I think. I think I sold it. No, I've still got it somewhere. <coughs> Missy Bench. That's actually it's been tidied up. Saying it's messy. It was worse than that yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got a 3478A somewhere. Um, put away. I did buy one which was supposedly calibrated, but I found issues with it. It wasn't consistent. Like one range would be right, the next range would be wrong. Like the overlap would be distinctly wrong. Um, so, yeah, it's. I think it was not completely calibrated. You know, I just put away. I've, I've got that as a backup unit. HPIL. All oh, right. Back in 20 minutes, if I'm still here. You serious? <laughs> if I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'll still be here. Yeah. Hey, Kerry. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm usually still here in a few hours' time. <laughs> anyway, right. So, the thing that's on the bench is the Boonton 2510, which I showed, was it last week? Week, week before? Was it, I think it's, oh, was it this week? I don't blame you. Anyway, recently I showed it on a mailbag video. And I had the power switches, the voltage selection set reversed to what they should have been because it wasn't clear to me which way they were supposed to go. And I took a guess, it was the wrong one. And I mean, I just put, created the switches and powered it back up again, it worked, so it wasn't like it killed or anything, but I did blow the fuse. Um, no, not carefully, it's, it's the boon time I'm working on. And. But the display's dim, and it was like that in the um, photos I saw on eBay when I purchased it. So it's not like it's gone dim because of me blowing a fuse on it when I first got it. That is already like that. So I want to work on that today. Now, there's two options of what I can do to fix it. I've done a little bit of checking into it. It's had a little, you know, pulled it apart a little bit and had a little poke around and figured out what the configuration is because the manual doesn't actually go into enough detail about that part. And. So I know what I need to do, at least one option I know what I need to do. <clears throat> the other option is more involved, may not even work, and will take a lot longer. Um, but it could be more interesting. Don't know. On the fence about that one. So I've got two plans in my head for how we can tackle this. One I'm pretty sure will work, the other one may or may not, and will take longer, like I said. Um, yeah. 
but like I said, it could be more interesting. I might just describe what what the option is there and and show you. Um, but the actual process will be, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna record a video about it as well, so I'll see if I can make some footage for a proper video to finish it off. Because I have some footage recorded already of this unit, which I'm gonna put in a separate video, and I want to basically wrap it up and finish it off, sort of thing, you know. Also, I need to replace some capacitors in it. There'll be caps featured. Um, what's in a spice rack? That's my wife's section. That little corner there is my wife's corner. Uh, that's her little office she uses. And the spice rack is some crafting stuff, I think. Some little bits and pieces. The mains voltage selection is now correct. That is part of the things I've covered in the new video. I'll show you that in a second, actually. No touchy, yeah, that, that corner's no touchy. <laughs> uh, although I do tend to, when she's not around, I do tend to like put things on her desk. And then she comes out and turns up and finds my stuff on her desk and I have to move the back off. Anyway, so anyway, we'll work on that. We'll get that finished off. I want to finish that video off, get that one wrapped up. And then and that shouldn't take too long, really. It depends on which route, route, route we take. Imagine you want to pronounce it. Um, one way be relatively quick, I think. No, apart from some mechanical changes, but we'll see what happens there. And then we've got a pile of gear behind me, which... It's been sitting here for some time. Um, yeah, I really need to go into this thing. This has been sitting here for six months. About that. I see that six months. Uh, that's the IF signal generator. But this is big. It, it barely fits on my desk at all. Well, half fits on it. So I'm likely to tackle some smaller stuff, which is on the pile. We'll see. Key fifty one fifty B. That's is that in the pile? Hold on. Key fifty one fifty B. What's that? That's an HP, isn't it? No, that's an HP three four zero six. One fifty B. I thought I'd finished. Did I? I've got another key fifty sitting here as well. You guys want to see this yet? I don't think. Might have done. But yeah, I've got some stuff keep my 50b I thought I'd finished that or almost finished it or did I get to a point where I was happy with it maybe that's what it was I got to a point where I was happy with it I'm trying to remember what the 150b was now what I was doing with that one I don't remember it's... <laughs> Was it? Was it this in the teaser? Oh. Is my video description wrong? Because I'd choose. Oh, it does say that too. And try to fix something. Let's change this. Fix something. Because I'd choose the, the last video, right? So I'll just re reproduce the last video for the live stream and schedule it from that. So it's. Um, I'll see I edited it last time. Here we go. Fixed. We already did the 150B. Done that one. I've got I've got another Keefley here. It's not a 150B. It's something else. I don't know what it is. I haven't even powered it up yet, actually. I should do that. But yes, it's all wonky. Sort of, sort of like. I 
Haven't you any for Jesse from Stillet? Never heard of them. Don't know who they are. Right. Anyway, I'm just going to finish my coffee and then we'll get started. Still it. Hmm. So I haven't heard that one. This is something I need to look into. What did I do? I had my tablet ready to go. I need to get this thing fired up properly so I can actually see the chat while I'm sitting over there. Distill it. Ah, oh, okay. No, it's not the sort of thing I follow. I'm not really into alcohol based channels, I suppose. That's not really something I do. Pause the playback. Come on. Pause. Got any pop ups everywhere? Right. Okay. Pause the playback. No one here. Okay, let's go and play with something. Change views, get some lights on, all that kind of stuff. And must not forget to record video. Actually, what I'm talking about, thinking about is I've got here two of these smoke controls for Canon, right? I've got a Canon camera. Neither one are working, but, well, the remotes are working. The camera appears to no longer respond to infrared remote controls. So, it looks like I might need to pull my camera apart and fix it. Now, that can be tricky trying to record that. I don't know, I'll have to see if I, I don't know, it's just the infrared remote sensor. It is not too hard to get to. I'm trying to get a replacement. I did a little search yesterday on YouTube and just trying to look for some teardowns, how to get into the camera, how to get to where that sensor is. Um, so it's actually not too hard to get to it. But like I said, I need to find a replacement that will fit. Because it's, you know, being a camera, it's all really small and stuff. Use a mirror. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. But uh, yeah, it um, requires a bit of a strip down. Now, my wife's got a camera. Wherever she'll let me borrow it, wherever I'm gonna ab able to use it to do recording with in the same way I do now, I don't know. Um, oh, I'm sure she'll let me borrow it, but she wouldn't really mind. She's not like that. But um, yeah, I might have to do that. Because I was doing this research on it, it's like I couldn't find any um, videos about the camera sensor failing. And it also mentions about the remote controls not working because there's like settings in here which you have to make sure you enable first, otherwise the remote doesn't work, and things like that. Um, or people with faulty remote controls, but um, nothing about the camera itself being faulty. So that's something I'm, I may do a video about later on. Because it drives me nuts because I've always used remote controls, right? With this camera, I've always had a remote because it's just much bigger because then the, you don't get the camera wobble when it starts and stops and stuff like that, you know? There's a bit less editing I have to do. Um, yeah, so it's back to the iPhone recording. Oh, it's true. I could record with the iPhone. Yeah, I could do that. I still got a bracket somewhere. Yeah, it's possible. I could I could really digress a bit and 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 well regress. That's the word. Regress a lot and go back to the old handheld iPhone. You know, the old wobbly cam. <laughs> Those were the days. Back when I got 10 views on a video, if I was lucky. Yeah, I've tested the remotes, that they work. I mean, I don't know if it will sharp on here. Is it sharp on here? No, it doesn't sharp on here. Not, not this camera. This one doesn't show it. This one's also got a filter in there. But yeah, it does actually, um, it does work. The remotes do work. They do flicker on a, on a camera. They do show up. So the cameras themselves, the, the remotes themselves do work. New camera, yeah, well, it's a good, it's a good reason to get a new camera. You know, this one's faulty now. I need to get a new one. 
if I was going to get a new one, I'd probably get like a proper video camera rather than a DSLR. Um, I don't know, but they're much bulkier. It's not, I don't like. I don't want the big size. I don't want the big. I've only got a little room here. This room's not big, so anything which is small is better. Focus your bastard. Yeah, it's definitely something that happens. Yes, it's new camera time again. Yeah. Anyway, right, it's actually, um, is it on? That's, I think that's on. Yes, that's on. Let's change views. Your 4K camcorder's not that big. Um, well, here's my camera setup, right? This is what I record with. This beastie here, all right? That's it. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've got this on to try and shield light off the lens, obviously to try and stop any kind of degradation because of light getting across the glass but um yeah but that's got the, the sort of uh zoom range that i like to have is and get out wide enough to get the desk if i don't need it and get in just far enough really for close-ups like would like slightly more zoom but that's a good lens compromise it works quite well before i had that i'd like a one did a really good zoom but you couldn't really get out far enough and then the other one was really wide you couldn't get in far enough so this one here boys this lens um don't know what it is it's been on it so long i haven't looked at it 18 to 135 18 to 135 mil that's what i use on that anyway um let's get set up over there and change hdmi is hdmi gonna work it is you don't need all that garbage on the screen, do you? Right. So I shall record with the camera, and you'll see what I'm recording at the same time, obviously, like I always do. And so you'll get a better view. I, mean, I could do the, like, the wider bench view kind of thing, or... Um, uh, you know, something like this, or something, but gives you a broader view but you don't really see as well so I think using this view is better yeah well the other thing is trying to get the depth of field that's the other thing I like I, I actually want a, a quite broad depth of field I don't want a narrow depth of field like some people got you know want that bokeh effect where the background's blurry now it's okay if you're trying to do like a thumbnail or something like that when you're trying to get a nice image which is focused purely on the subject without the background being really that distracting. You know, that's what it's good for. But when you're trying to record a video, you want the whole thing to be in focus. So trying to get the depth of field is the biggest issue on this as well. So trying to get like the right aperture size and what have you. Um, so I have quite a small aperture to try and get a decent depth of field, but that then gives me lower light levels, which means I'm on the borderline of being grainy all the time. Like right now it's probably a little bit grainy because I haven't got my list of my lights on. But um, yeah, anyway, that's one of the things I, I sort of battle a little bit is trying to get a, a depth of field which is deep enough with um, decent lighting. Anyway, let's stop waffling about that. Let's do this. And let's get this on. Okay. So I'll demonstrate the problem as well before we start pulling it apart. So I can try and do like a before and after shot or something as well. Let's try and spin this around a bit so hopefully you can hear me better over here. I do know it does sound distant, but I'm using one microphone again now. I did have that two microphone thing for a while, but um, I don't really think it's necessary if I have it angled around the right way around. Right. What am I forgetting about? The tablet, that's what I'm forgetting about. I knew I'm forgetting something. I better read the chat from sitting over there. And 
just plug in a USB C set of chargers. Oh, great, it makes noises now. Interesting. My phone level is probably grainy when it's used tethered mode. That good lighting. All oh, right. <coughs> Alright, so things I need to do, actually, I need to get this out of the way a little bit. I'm going to discover the new problem because I put a light over here, up there in that corner, and it reflects on the tablet. That's annoying. No, oh, I have to adjust things. It seems to be almost wherever I put it, I've got a light reflecting on it. That's annoying. Okay. We will need to power cable. A picture of this. This is going to take a while because I have to use a manual button on the front. And you get to see everything whilst you wait. Right. Let's <clears throat> cool some video on this thing. So, next stage of this thing is. I was going to wrap it up and leave it as it was, but the fact that the display was not very readable, that's been bugging me quite a bit. I didn't really feel like I'd actually finished the project because I haven't replaced any capacitors, shock horror, and the display, although it was readable without my bright lighting here, I just wasn't happy with it. It's, it's dark. So I just didn't feel like it was complete. So I've decided to continue with this and we'll finish it off and do the final bits which I've just been niggling in my mind about not actually being finished so this has actually been put away in the garage for a couple of weeks and I sort of thought well it's been bothering me for the past couple of weeks that I didn't really finish it so we're back so let's power this thing up and I'll show you the issues So I'll tip it up so you can see it a bit better. Turn it on. And the display is there, right? But you can't really see it with this lighting. I can see it. The camera's not really seeing it. Yeah, I think maybe the colour's being filtered a bit as well. But the camera's really struggling to see it, but I can see it. But it is there. It's just not good. You can kind of see it there, that angle, actually. I can sign on here, you can just about see it there, look at that. There you go. Alright, so that is bothering me quite a bit. And the fact that I haven't recapped it. I mean, we've already tested it works, it does actually up at the correct levels, stuff like that, so I'm not worried about the actual functionality of it, apart from the display. So that needs to be fixed. Uh, Mitch also recapping two old Cobra CBs. Which ones? 29s or 148s or something like that? They're the ones that usually come up. Come up mostly the 29s. It's always capacitors, yes. It's always capacitors. You need to use the right terms. Bad backlight. Well, yes. And we'll pull this apart. Oh, YouTube just quit. Thank you. That's great. Trying to read the chat and it's disappeared. I think it's doing an update because I haven't turned the tablet on for a little while. Not since the last live stream, actually. Come on. Any day now. Well, this is frustrating. <laughs> it's pulling this thing apart. Whilst you wait for the tablet to figure out what the hell it's doing. There we go. Pause playback. Okay. So let's open this thing up and I'll show you what is inside. I don't know if I showed you this before or not in the last video. I don't think I did. I think I'd even opened it up. Just pull the power for now. That's what's inside it. Not a lot. 
Um, obviously, there's another board on the other side, but these are the capacitors need, Jimmy. Now, I've got to try and get this board out, which is a little bit more involved because these are bolted to the side here, and instead of having a screw going this way, the screw comes from the outside, and it's got a trim panel. So, it's a bit more involved getting into that, but doable. Back of the display is interesting. Now, what we've got here, we've got this little metal box just here. So this, little metal, so this little metal box here, that's got a transformer inside there. And that's a high voltage converter. So it's got an electroluminescent backlight. So here's a five volt rail here, comes in through this plug. That goes to this little box, which has got a transformer in it and a little bit of circuitry, which forms an oscillator. So it actually converts a DC into an AC high voltage, which is then runs through these wires here to the backlight of the display. Now I've done work on electroluminescent displays in the past, which makes me tempted to actually try and repair the display rather than trying to replace it. I could do it either way. But there's no guarantee it's actually going to get any better. <laughs> uh, and the other thing is when this is running, I can actually hear this transformer. I can hear the high voltage AC, I can hear it, because it winds, it's about 2 kilohertz or so. I can actually hear the thing running, and I don't like that. Um, so, yes, I could potentially replace the display, or I could potentially try and repair the display. That's the challenge I've got right now. Which route do I take? Or which route do I take? Depends on which country we're in, I suppose. Just replace the LEDs. Well, it's also got a slimline display, so I'm going to pull this apart in a second and I'll show you. I have a this apart already once, which is how I know what's in here and how it's configured. Um, let me try and find something. Got it here somewhere. I think it's in this drawer. Somewhere in here. Here we go. Here it is. Hmm, it's a bit worse for wear. I've had this for a long time. So, electroluminescent displays. Now, if you're familiar with those already, it's, it's like, yeah, okay, that's, that's not exactly complicated. But, people which are familiar with them, not so much. Now, this is actually a repair kit. Because I had a old Sony stereo many years ago, I don't know, a dozen years ago. Which um, ended up being no good. Which one of these was it? I don't remember. <laughs> I've got all sorts of bits lying around there. But that might be the original one here. And basically you've got two layers. And it's a phosphor on here. And they glow when you put a power across them. So this is actually a... Repair I did. Oh, yeah. Did I make these? Have I laminated that? That's an original one. This must be a repair one. Yeah. Doesn't look anywhere near as good. But then, oh, it doesn't look right, does it? So, you've got contacts here which you stick on. I don't know. Just makes you wonder. And the idea is you can then make a new backlight display. So here's the structure. I've had this thing for a dozen years and say so this is all cracked up now. It's got these tracks for it. It may not work too well. I don't know. Um, but the idea is you just cut it to the size you want, stick some contacts on it, and put it back in. Um, I got this from Pace Electronics, is it? Long time ago, so I got this a dozen years ago, maybe 15 years ago. A long time. There you go, I got it from Farnell. That's where I originally bought it from. And obviously, they got it from here. Um, that wasn't cheap either, remember, Otley? I think it was fairly expensive. I think it was like $100 or something for this kit or something like that. It was horrendous. 
But that was one route I was thinking of doing is trying to actually repair it with this and replace the backlight part. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's looking a bit worse for wear to be honest. Um, yeah, so look, can I actually explain that story? I don't remember. So I had an old Sony stereo which had an electrolomism back on it. This is a, quite an expensive stereo. This thing was like $2,000 when I bought it. This is a car stereo. This is back when I was doing cardio, which is where Def Pom came from. And it had fiber optic outputs and stuff like that, so which went to the amps, and, and it was all really high quality, really low noise levels. Um, signal to noise ratio was like 105 dB or something like that. Um, anyway, that was an expensive stereo so naturally I wanted to keep that stereo working and the backlight on the display was getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and then I, I purchased this kit to replace the backlight on the display of that stereo and this is before we are doing YouTube videos I actually had a YouTube account at the time I think I might have had one so I mean, it's a shame I didn't do a video about it, it would have been interesting but yeah so I actually made a new backlight for that stereo and that worked and that was working fine for a few more years I ended up selling that stereo in that condition and it, it's still working fine when I sold it. Anyway, um, yes. Andrew's here and so is Embedded Hobbyist. I don't know if I'm still recording. And I'm trying to get this drawer shut again. Because I decided I'm not going to use the backlight on this. If I can get my drawer shut, here we go. That gets out of the way of my legs. Designing your first board and kick head. Or kick head. <laughs> right. Get this up slightly. So now. We want to get the display apart and actually show you what's going on in here. Like I said, I've already researched this a little bit. I've been in here already once and had a look just to figure out what's actually in here. So we get this out. It's not hard. So first thing we do is actually taking this top handle off. off and then we can take the front bezel off and there is the naked display and it's got a 14 pin header at this end which has been angled not right 90 degrees with that I probably could have got that straight on but I did that with it and it looks like a standard 40 by 2 display you saw that on when it was powered up anyway. And the mounting stuff are the same. So here I actually have some 40 by 2 displays. I've got a few different ones. I've got like a yellow, a green, and a blue. Now this isn't going to get much use. This is going to be the sort of thing that gets used very rarely. So I'm not worried about having a display which I don't like on it. And I don't particularly like blue displays. I got this one because I was just tinkering around with different display types. I've got a few different styles of display, you know, and they all actually work just fine. But uh, so my plan is to actually literally just swap it out. Now, one of the problems with this is that this is much thicker than this one. The depth is much greater, right? It's not double the height. So that needs to be looked at because these have got metal standoffs in here, which I think are actually part of the chassis. Haven't had this display out yet. I've only pulled it apart and had a look at it. Um, so I had an idea what I wanted, which is also why I've got this right angle header on here. Because I thought, right, if I'm going to plug this in, I need to put a right angle header on, so I've already done that. It will probably work. So, this is obviously LED backlight. This is electroluminescent. Not hard to convert between the two. Um, not hard at all. We just don't use the backlight driver on this thing anymore. You just unplug it. So, that's the plan, is to take this display out and replace it with this one. Now, 
the only tricky thing I think is these standoffs just sort of nose out because I think they are part of the chassis. So it looks like it's pressed into the aluminium plate here. It looks like it's one piece. I was actually hoping that it's just like a threaded stud, which this is then just a spacer from, but I don't think it is because I loosened one of these screws off a little bit and that did not come loose. So I think that is one piece, unfortunately, which makes this a bit trickier to deal with because I kind of need to get this out or cut these down if I need to put on a thicker display. Thirty-eight point eight, Jesus. Yeah, that's not good, man. That's that's um, yeah, that's verging dangerous. I think. I think about thirty-nine. I think as we really have to start thinking about going to hospital. <laughs> I think I'm right about that. Anyway. So let's pull this front panel out, well, this display out, and we'll see what we can do with this. Now, this plugs in here, so let's pop that off. As you can see, I'm using a perfect size screwdriver for this. The one is too big. Uh, we've got the driver here. Actually, let's take the driver off, because we won't be using that anymore. We'll get this out of the way as well. Because, oh, I could just this go. I might just leave the wires off, actually. No, I'll leave the driver in place, I'll leave it intact. It can stay in this unplugged. And I will just make sure it's left unplugged, which is this connection here. Now I might actually look at replacing the wires on this. Can I swap this out? I can. So I can actually oh, there you go. I can actually pull the wires out of this plug here and put new ones in. So I actually just get this driver, cable tie all these wires out of the way and insert new wires into this and use this to power the new display. Sounds like a plan. No, that's all the displays I've got, they're all the same thickness. I don't have any similar ones because of LED backlights. They're all a bit more involved, I think. Um, right. So this has got wires on display, which I'm going to need to. Shall I cut them? Or this are oh, this older than I think. Is this going to fit in there? Yes, it will. Great, Scott, it's a life, Scott. Yes, it is, Christian. Fifty-nine put you in the hospital for two and a half weeks. Yeah. Right, let's get this display out. So it's got a little bracket on this side. I don't know that's going to be a problem because I can't get to the screw. It's behind it. That's curious. I might have to pull the sticker off to get to that screw. Well, let's get this side out first. Might have to get tweezers. Quite a long screw. So it's got a little cover there because of the high voltage that's normally sitting on here. Should we see what that voltage is? Let's power it up and see what we're actually getting here, just out of curiosity.
Right, pair that up. And let's measure on here. What do we get? Maybe not there, maybe here. Now, it'll help if I plug it back in again, eh? Let's plug it back in. <laughs> now I can hear the warning. It's much better. Okay. There you go, 193 volts AC. Right, so that's why it's got the little cover over there so you don't accidentally touch it if you're poking around. Yes, shorten the standoffs is an option. But it would involve cutting them, which is going to be a bit trickier. And means getting metal debris potentially everywhere as well. I don't really want that. I'm not quite sure what to do with those yet. I mean, cutting them is certainly something that came to my mind. Um, they're certainly long enough to go right down. I think those studs are basically screwed and you know, threaded right down towards the end there. So anyway, I'll plug that. Now there's one more screw over here, which is behind this little bracket. Which is annoying. I think I have to peel this off to get to the little screw because there's a screw right there. And that's a shame. I don't really want to disturb that. Taking it again. <laughs> 38.2, it scared it down a bit, has it? Can I get under here? It is spring steel. Can I bend it out the way and bend it back? Or is it just going to be deformed if I do that? It's only there to um, touch against the back of that metal plate, which sits in normally. It's like an earth tab, I suppose. Um, yeah, I don't want to disturb this plate on the side. If I can get underneath the thing. Here we go. Disturbed. So I say using a spudger here, get down to the side so I can get to this little screw in here. So I can get that little bracket off. Or at least loosen it. This is the nut and bolt, so anyway. Let's loosen this off here. Tweezers. Bolt out. There is the display with the wires of the backlight driver. So I'm going to desolder this, and like I said, I'm going to leave these wires all like caught up inside to keep it original. You never know if I'm going to place this display or repair this display. Actually, I think that backlight I had wasn't big enough anyway. That backlight film it was only sort of this sort of size. Wasn't big enough to do the whole thing anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm going to desolder this and just keep that part original and I'll maybe I'll try and fix this one day. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it back in again. Because I do quite like the colour because it's orange. And it's actually quite a nice colour. I quite like it. So we'll get this out. Come on. Melt. No 
to set the display up. Switch around is the positive, negative, heat positive that side. I could always measure it again or pair it up, I suppose. Don't see much of mine. So let's pop this off again. I'll pull these wires out, so I'm going to use the original plug. Hopefully, I can pull these wires out. If I'm lucky, I can. They're in there pretty well. There we go, that's one, two, right. Like I said, I'm just going to get these wires here and just cord them up out of the way, out of one side, to keep it original as much as possible at least. I don't like to modify things too far from original. There's no harm in this sitting here like this, you know, just like that, it'll be fine. And I can use this plug for the new wiring to go to the display. Easy enough. Let's get a cable tie out. Here's the messy desk. I basically, any crap I get on my desk, I'll just like, sweep it this way and eventually I'll just like clear it off if once in a while. These are some uh, infrared LEDs which I had to replace recently. There's a video about that coming out soonish. Recording this bit because it's kind of pointless. The other thing I might do is try and actually secure that down so it doesn't come over here and touch the circuit board and potentially short stuff out my have to look at what I can do about that. Okay. Probably a bit later on. So do I mix projects up here? I could mix two projects at once. So I could actually because I want to get this board out as well because I'm gonna replace these capacitors. Should I do half the display then do the ball? I think I should. Get a cat in there, <laughs> clean, clean, clean the bench off, yeah, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, well the display I've got here is it's a blue one. So I've got three displays that I, and I looked at them all yesterday and um, this one actually will power from 3 volts, 5 volts runs it as well, but I'm actually worried about 5 volts overdriving a little bit, there might be a 3 volt backlight, I don't know. But um, these have, like the original header on here is 14 pins, actually I should discuss this in the video. You want me to prove the LCD works first, okay, that's fair enough, we shall do that. So this display here, this is a standard 16 pin header display, like a parallel display. And this has got a 14, yeah, this has got a 14 pin plug and the original one was a 14 pin header. Now the extra two pins, pin 15 and 16, they are what's used on the backlights and these more modern displays. Okay, well, <laughs> relatively modern displays, this still aren't particularly modern really. But, so 15 and 16 are backlight. Now, because I had already done a bit of a check on this thing, and figured out what was in here and I just had a look at it and figured out okay right that looks like it's all standard so I actually already put a 14 pin header on this board and angled it ready to go onto this connector it should work I'm pretty confident it'll work and this end here is when I can wire onto the power to do the backlight now 
This is the thing that always throws me, right? It's anode cathode. I always struggle with anode cathode. Or is it which one's the positive? I always struggle with that. I always have to try it and find out. I'll just start remember it. I doesn't matter what I do, I cannot remember which one of those goes to the positive. <laughs> it just doesn't stick in my head. I don't know what it is. Anyway. So right, we'll try this out and we'll see if it actually does work. Um, actually, how should I do this? I'll do it, I will do it on top like this. And try and do something with it so it doesn't get destroyed. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to do this. There we go. Um, it'll be upside down. That's what you're going to get. switches off isn't it yes turn the power on oh hold on turn the power on over here and yes we have a display get you focus there you go display is working so all we've got to do now is sort out the backlight So that is exactly what I thought was going to happen, because I did do a little bit of checking on like the connections on here to make sure that the the negative of the display drive looked about right. So I did make sure that like, the negative, what I expected to be a negative pin, was like the zero volt pin onto the rail over here, and that made sense. I thought, okay, it must just be a standard supply uh, display setup, you know, just with the electroluminescent backlight. Uh, as far as which way is which, um, I don't quite remember. <laughs> Diode test. There you go. Let's do the diode test. Let's do the diode test on this thing. That one. The A goes to the positive. That's lighting up. I can see it lighting up. You won't be able to see it, but yeah. Okay. That's probably right. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> now I need to try and get this into, you know, A is positive. This needs to stick into my head. Right? Anode is positive. I need to get that stuck in because I never ever remember it. It's weird. I just never remember it. So these posts are indeed fixed, which is a shame. Um, look at the flux on this thing. Take that. I never cleaned the flux off when I soldered it from the factory. Lazy buggers. There's flux in here. It's a little moving around and I can see there's quite a bit of flux left on those connections there from that front panel. Obviously when I manufactured it because it's all hand soldered that bit. There's sort of flux behind. A, always positive yeah okay yeah I need to find some kind of thing which makes that stick in my head I've been trying for years I know <laughs> literally years like oh what the hell is it this time uh, let's take a bit of cleaner on this try and clean some of this flux up I just don't like it Probably being a bit excessively fussy here. I just think it's ugly. It might not even come up after all this time. Been there for a long time. Yeah, that's pretty strong. He's got some of it off. Yeah, it's probably been too fussy about it, really. It's just 
you know. Yeah, I've got some of some of it. That'll do. It's 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 better than it was when I got there. <laughs> That's always a goal, and you couldn't see it. I don't think what I was doing because I'm zoomed in, and my tablet's gone back to sleep. I really got to turn the sleep thing off. How deep is the free wall for the threads, Kitten? All right, good question. Let's have a look. Quite a way, actually. That much of the thread before it touches the threading. So, yeah, it's basically a blank shaft until it gets right down to the base. So, probably, probably about half the shaft is actually not threaded, and the bottom half of the shaft is threaded. So, cutting down is an option, but uh, that will be messy. Dremel cutoff wheel. Yes, I do have a Dremel and I do have a cutoff wheel. The only problem is my Dremel. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because my, I don't know, I'm just clumsy. I don't know. But the um, when I'm using that Dremel cutoff wheel, I have those wheels. They tend to break on me. And they go flying off and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah. Could be entertaining. So, yeah, I could actually cut these off. I'm tempted to do that rather than trying to rip these posts out and replace them. Because they might end up damaging this back plane. So I'm actually going to really prefer to actually cut them than try and pry them out. I mean, they're obviously pressed in place. But no hard they'll be to move. Yeah, that's really solid. That's not just going to move out easy. Um, can I take that plate off? Without too much trouble. Um, nah, means desoldering this connector and stuff like that. I think. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't. I mean, I can certainly do it in place. I'll get to it in place. I'll have to do things like shove tissue everywhere so it doesn't actually like get into places it shouldn't. Yeah, I only tend to use low revs though. I mean, they'll be cutting fine and it's only able to shatter, you know. I'm going to put a little bit, maybe it's a bit of sub -base stress or something, but I don't know. I'm going to go and grip my Dremel tool and my cutoff wheels and maybe a couple of them. And what we'll do is we'll just shove some tissue and stuff in, in here and try and stop any debris going in a place we don't want it to go. And um, I'll do it in place rather than try and strip it down any further. I should be right back. Now, Everybody watch Ian, right? Ian always tries to steal my soldering arm when I'm gone. Watch him.
Right, I'm back. His camera. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the stainless definitely aren't screw. They're um, they're definitely pressed in place. Unfortunately, yeah, Jim was an Ursha workshop exactly. It's in my garage. One cut off wheel. Trying to catch up with chat. Right. Spanner. Works. Washing up liquid on as post for Oh, really? Okay. Lubrication. Can't say we've tried that. Now I need to find out how much to cut off, which is a relatively straightforward thing to work out. Zoom out a little bit, shall we? All right, so we need to know the depth of the original display. PCB, back of the PCB to the front of the display, 6.4 mil. Actually, let's record this, shall we? So I'm going to cut off these posts using a Dremel. And what I'm going to do is work out the depth I need to cut the posts off to. So the original display is 6.6 .6 mil there, 6.3 there, 6.4 there. 6.3, 6.4, let's call it 6.5, eh? Let's just go slightly more, I mean, yeah, 6.5. Let's do that. So the difference between these two is what I've got to take off. So you've got 11.3, so that's like 5 mil. 11.4, 11.4, yeah, okay. So I'll take 5 mil off this. If I make this post 5 mil shorter, then that'll be the, the right amount. Now the tricky bit is going cutting off exactly the right amount of all, all of them. So yeah. That's always gonna be fun. So five mil. Let's set this to five mil and see if I can get a line set. At about the right point. And trying to cut them perfectly is gonna be interesting as well. Look at that, exactly five. So let's just try and can I put a scratch down it? Sometimes you put scratches down. Sometimes this works. Kind of see scratch marks. It's not great. The other way is to actually get something which is five mil thick, and actually put it on the end, splash on the end, and then like draw a line around it, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go for this technique. If I'm lucky, this will work. Now what I can actually try doing now, put some scratches on it. Is get some pen. wipe it off and if I'm lucky I'll get into the scratch and hide the scratch up uh, show the scratch up some more if I'm lucky just to create some more contrast Yeah, 
kind of helped slightly, but not much. It ain't great. Taping around the send offs, yeah, I must do it. Well, the other thing I can look at is the distance to the cut mark and then see if that's a consistent distance as well. So there to there is where the scratches are. That's 12 mil. Yeah, 12 millimeters long. So Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It has got to be close enough. You know, within a millimetre, it's probably going to be fine, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not liking that. It's not really visible enough for me. It is kind of visible, but not enough. I can't see it. I can't see it, actually. Let me just double check. That looks like it's about five. Yes. I can't see them all, so maybe I'll just go with that. Let's uh, protect everything. And we'll go from there. Yeah, they're going to be hard. They're going to be steel. So it, it could take a bit to get them cut. Let's get some stuff to protect everything. Hopefully it's done catch on fire. That could be much more entertaining. Yeah, probably a steel, exactly, but... Uh... No, the risk is it would get caught on the paper. <laughs> you have to round up the thing and... And cause all kinds of other problems. But uh, anyway, I'm all worried about getting metal shavings and metal filings bloody everywhere. Because obviously that's not going to be good for electronics, is it? Just want to fill in all these gaps with this paper. So there's no real risk of it getting anywhere it shouldn't get. Hopefully. And the paper being what it is, should hopefully grab any bits and absorb them a little bit. They get caught up on it. Right, what do you reckon my chances are of doing this successfully without completely ballsing it up? You know, I'm going to take any bets on this. So I remove the panel, yeah. Yes, um, I don't know, reckon IPA will do it. Or should we catch fire? <laughs> get a flaming IPA with paper towel. Alright, let's get some dishwasher with it then. Let's try it. I also haven't tried this short liquor before, so let's give it a shot, see if it helps. Cutting oil, well, yeah, I don't actually have the cutting oil, I've got um, WD 40. I haven't really got any oils like that actually. 
I'll be texting you. I'll chuck something on. Let's put a little bit of dishwash liquid on this one. It should drip onto the bottom one. Yeah, we'll see. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Glasses behind me in my drawer here. Right, let's try this. What could possibly go wrong? Where's the mark gone? <laughs> Where's the mark gone? Hold on, I can't see it in his glasses now. Now let's get it started then and put the glasses on. It's not facing towards me, I'm off to the side. You never ever use a rotational tool on axis towards you, I'm sitting right here, right? In line with it. You never use it this way. You always do it side on. That way if it does shatter, it doesn't hit you. That's just a basic thing. <laughs> right, there's the scratch mark. I'll get it started, then I'll put glasses on once I can see what I'm doing. Let me double check this distance. Move this away. Oh, okay. Fire extinguisher. Ah, it's be fine. I've got IPA to put the fires out with. Feel he's slightly down there. Need to be 12 mil. Right, now I've got a line marked, so I can start. About there, right. Oh, moved. Don't be moving while I'm doing this. See so now, because I moved away from where I was, because I was in slightly too close, I've overcompensated now, but you're going too far away. That's what I thought. Could be here for some time. Yes. <laughs> Fish, I haven't got that cat in the right place.
more liquid. Halfway through, yeah. Now, what do you reckon the bets are that I got it right? Twelve mil. Oh, twelve point five. Twelve point five mil. I can always grind it down a bit. I can always grind it. I don't have grinding stone. I can do that. I'm slightly over. Next one. We called this. So I'll just cut the first post off. I'm about half a millimeter longer than I want to be. I want to be 12 mil long. I'm about 12.5 on this one. So I'm going to get the next one a bit closer. But I'm not too worried about being slightly long. Being short would be a bit more problem. Um, being a bit long is fine because I can always grind it off a bit more with the stone. I'm not worried about that at all. Um, but trying to get it close to right is the important thing. Here is that I can't get in there this way with it really. It's always fun. Right, this way I can't really get into either. <sighs> Measuring, isn't that great? I have to get this way. So I know I've got to cut five mil off. 4.95, that's perfect. Now it's perfect before I stopped. Now I've restarted again. Is it still perfect? Four point one, okay, good enough.
and then if we're lucky these studs will be about the same height they're very similar last one and this is a tricky one it's a bit tight space Going off the top of his finger. Oh. <laughs> did I just drop the cut this one onto the screen? Did I? I don't think I did, did I? It's got a potato film on it anyway. It's still got a film on there. Right. Five mil. Four point seven five. It's pretty close. All right. Pretty good. A bit more liquid. No broken bit so far. <laughs> Not yet. about the same length that's a good sign <laughs> right. what's your liquid has salt in it really that may do I don't know wouldn't surprise me actually right let's go and tip this outside so the debris falls off it then I'll take the paper off and I'll come back. Now the question is, do they actually look the right length? But 
The bottom one here looks longer than this one. And they're not even that straight. <laughs> this one's straight. These two have gotten slightly wonky. They're slightly crooked. The cuts aren't straight. So obviously what I've been cutting, I've been cutting um, a slight angle there's been drifting off as I've been cutting. Right. That's not exactly hard to fix though. I do have a grinder. Also, I have to go and get the paper back in it. Let's put the paper back in. They definitely look wrong. Let me just actually offer a display up to it first before I commit to that. Yeah, definitely wonky. So, and yeah, definitely this post here definitely needs to be shortened slightly. I knew this mechanical part of it would be the worst bit to do. <laughs> so let's see if this will sit in there now. This has to go over the front. This is the main fatter there, whether that will sit in there like that or not. Not looking bad actually. Let's break the knee display, that'd be great. Um, I think I need to grind this very slightly as well. It's not quite straight. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to plug this up. Do it this way, I think. All right, so it just needs a little bit as well, not much. I'll do that hitting the paper. Let's go see the dentist. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Alright. 
this in place. I think that's basically it though. Certainly very close. I could screw it in place and then see how the panel fits. That's the other way I could do it. I think it's still hitting on that bottom corner. This one here is still a bit, a bit too long. Just about there. This needs like another half mil off maybe. Now, should I actually measure these and see roughly what they look like? <laughs> see if my bite eye is actually working out or not. So that depth there is. Doesn't lock up on me. Twelve point five. Twelve point seven, and you're blind. Twelve point eight, basically. So twelve point seven, twelve point seven. These two are actually pretty even now on that one, depending on how I measure it, which edge I'm looking at. Twelve point eight. So it's definitely still even. Slightly longer, yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah. Both still almost the same. The bottom is still very slightly longer. Depends which edge I'm going to on these things as well. So this one's not too bad. This is still slightly longer over here. Anyway, let's try to fit again. I just tweak this screw for where the nut falls off and I end up losing it. That feels flat now. They're still touching its front of the display slightly, but I think it's alright. So I'm just touching. I'm happy with that. Yep, screw it on, check it indeed.
two quarters of video, eh? So that's the posts cut down. And I have to just refine them a little bit using the grinder just to get them flatter on the ends so the ends weren't wonky. And uh, try and get them about the same height. They're all very close. There's not much in it. It's like 0.1 of a millimetre or something like that. And somewhere I've got another screw. Somewhere there's another screw. Oh, there it is. There, because I should have used this one. Doesn't matter. It's just this cover, which I don't need for this because it's not high voltage anymore. Let's try and get this screw in here. It's going to be awkward, right? Where's my tweezers going? Yeah. I'm going to leave this little springy plate here just in case it's a shielding thing or something. Who knows? Shouldn't really matter, but. It's on the originally, so I'm going to keep it the same way. As much as possible, anyway. Probably because I can't see what I'm doing there. Here we go. these down slightly and then we'll put the front panel back on and double check the fit this side is still definitely slightly longer you can see it so it's just resting against the front panel yep so bottom corner still still that one there is still a little bit too long this end's looking good but this end's looking a little bit too close to so it's actually touching on that corner and it's actually was pushing it out. I might have to grind it just slightly more. Am I a perfectionist? No. Okay, maybe a little bit. I think there's like another point one or point two off. Now long screws go straight through the post. This post has got threaded right through. So that's not an issue. It's not like the screws are causing any problems. It's mostly its bottom post. It's still slightly too long. But when you're there, then there's not much left to do on this one, then we can look at something else. A little bit more.
some tissue stuck in there. Right. One last check. Four point six eight. Four point six eight. Four point seven. I think that's good enough. And my tablet's gone back to sleep again. Oh, bloody thing. Now is this chat still updating or is it stopped? Like Lance likes to sometimes do stupid stuff. No, that's still going. Right. So you check to make sure these posts aren't going to touch anything on the back. Because they're too big. Oh, got the screw down there. I need to get that back out. No, it looks alright. Looks like they'll be clear. That's good. So yes, it would definitely be much nicer once this display has changed. It's just it's a shame because I really like the orange display, it should look quite nice. So, you know, in a way it's a bit of a shame that I've lost the original one. But the um, having a usable display is much more important. And getting this one running should actually be fairly easy. Now, what I'm actually thinking about doing because when I did the testing, this thing will bright up, light up quite lightly. Um, get a string of sense together. Because it lights up quite easily with a low voltage on the backlight, rather than five volts. I'm actually inclined to run this off a different supply, or potentially um, just put like a serious diode or something in there, drop the voltage slightly, just so it's not five volts anymore. Doesn't take the back the, the uh, stress off the backlight. And I broke the sticker on the side. back up again come on Took what's left of the sticker back on. <laughs> it's annoying, it broke. No, no mind. Didn't quite make it in time. Backlight connection is not done yet. So, like I said, I'm thinking about putting a diode or something in series here to drop the voltage slightly. I've got these metal files on my desk. Let's get rid of this. Right, it's a wire to run to this, and I'm going to stick a serious diode on there as well. 
just to drop the voltage slightly. Maybe even two diodes. I mean, I could put a regulator in there. Do I have a Zener I can use for that? I've got a 3.3 volt Zener, that's probably not too much. Mind you, it might not be. We could try it, see if it works. These are 3.3 volts in there because that'll be dropping the voltage. But obviously, the 3.3 volt drop is only across a certain current because you're using a much lower current. It should actually be less of a drop than that, which means it might actually work nicer. Um, I'm going to use these connections. I don't want to. I want to do a test outside of the meter itself first. I should put this away, get rid of it. Put some space back on my cramped disc. Nice convenient, my meat gear's already set up for the right thing. 5 volt, 100 milliamps. Perfect. So the red, red wire goes under K. No, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I think we've established this one now. Right, stick that on there like that. Stick this on here like this. Let's see what happens. Power on. Look at that. 40 milliamps. And the backlight's working nicely. So what I want to do is see what the voltage here is now. Um, let's turn it back off again, and I'll wedge this in. That shorting against the chassis, I think. If I'm lucky. So I'm going to try using a Zener diode for the form of voltage drop because this is a 5 volt supply it's going to be running from. And I don't really want to run 5 volts into the back of the backlight. I mean, it can kind of do it, but it doesn't really need to be stressed that much. So I've got a 3.3 volt Zener here. Now, 3.3 volt, we think, oh, that's only give you 1.7. Not true, because it depends on the current that's passing through the Zener. Right, the more current, the more volt drop you get down to that point. So 3.3 volts, it's a guide. For less current, you're going to get a less drop. So, let's actually have a look and see what voltage we're getting here. Hold to the Zener, and I'll turn the power on. If I can get this in here. Yeah, I'll shove that on there like that. That might work. Let's see what we're getting. Make sure we're not shorting anything out. That's obviously not in the right place. When we're getting nothing. That can't be right. There's always your voltage here. There we go. 4.1 volts. All right, so it's dropped it down by 0.9 volts going through a 3.3 volts inner. So I'm happy with that. That's definitely taking the stress off it. It's running at 44 milliamps. Um, that should be fine, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, a regulator could have been fine to so adjust the backlight brightness, but I'm, you know, I've just got a simple couple of connections here to do, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm happy with it as it is. Just wanted to verify that a 3.3 volt Zener is not going to be dropping off too much, and that looks fine. If anything, I'd like a slightly more drop than that, but just done the job. I mean, a regulator would be a nice way of doing it, be like, you know, Make it adjustable and choose the backlight setting you want. 
which suits the spray. But um, I'm being a little bit lazy in there. Put this away again. The desk is too cramped. Put it back in the drawer. It's always a challenge. All right. So we need a couple of wires. So negative can go straight to it. Positive, I'm going to run through the zener to do, create that drop. I mean, I, I could put two zeners in there. And they'll give me about, you know, maybe, well, give me slightly less because obviously if the voltage drops, the current drops. So I'll probably get about one and a half volts drop if I put two zeners in there. Um, I'm not worried about that really too much. Let's get some wire. It's just not five volts anymore, which is what I was worried about. I didn't want it to be too much. Somehow I just messed up the chat on this thing. <laughs> oh. Um, well, I was passing through the Zener. I'm not, I haven't got the Zener across this way, I've got it in series with the positive supply. So. So I'll go from that plug to there, through this slot. So kind of that much wire, I suppose, maybe slightly more. Now I've lost the chat completely, here we go. It's, what have I done to this buggy thing? Here we go, All right. Gonna solder this thing in. Now, do I do it from the front or from the back? Oh, I should do it from the back, really, shouldn't I? I'll strip it off badly. It's gonna pre tin it. You can't see. Now it's got to do the same sort of thing with a diode, with a wire on it. And then I'm going to hook up to the connector and it should be done. I was trying to drop the voltage a little bit. I'm not really too worried about exactly how I achieve that. I just want to drop the voltage a little bit. Honestly, it's fine. I'm not bothered at all. Not bothered. Ah. 
A K for cathode A for anode. Yes, 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 yes. That's that's helpful. <laughs> Just the uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll leave that one. So I'm going to shove this through, and then I shall heat shrink it. I think I'll attach the wires to it first, then I'll stick it through. This wires a bit thicker than I'd like it, probably will be fine though. The same length as the other one. shrink this as I've done it. So what project are you going to work on after this one? What do you reckon? Ideas for what you should work on next? Oh, almost did it right. <laughs> Should record a bit of video about this, shouldn't I? So I've soldered a diode on here. It's not pretty, but it'll do. Prettiness doesn't matter when it's being covered by heat shrink. This wire here, I've had this wire for a long time. This is real copper wire. <laughs> it's not fake copper wire. It's actually real copper wire. around was which I'm going to take a guess because I think that was the right inside there like that something now I don't have a proper tool for putting this into here so we will have to figure out what we're going to do with that I think it's a screwdriver punch down tool Thing is, this isn't like a standard, it's like a slot it drops into, so it's not quite the same. It's not ideal. 
I was actually using a punch down tool a couple of days ago. But that's for different terminals. Is this is different terminals than this? It's not quite the same. I don't think it'd actually work. So we'll see if I can get this pushed into the slot and if it can then it might work. <laughs> Let's plug it in, see if it works. If it does, I'll put the top on. I do have a telecom one, but it's not the same, it's a different style. I might see if this lights up or not. Since I've just shoved the wires into those connectors. Worst case, I sold them straight to the ball. But I'd like to keep it original if I can. Backlight is not going. Ugh. Hold on, chip the water just make sure that way around. Oh, I didn't have it the right around. <laughs> Let's turn the plug around. Maybe we can turn the plug around. Oh dear. Typical. Get in the backwards. It's all the effort. Come on, get in there. This right, I'm going to bloody solder it on. <laughs> solder it on would have been quicker and easier. Oh, still not going. Pretty sure I'm going to end up solving this in the end. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Yeah, it's a five volt supply just there. So it's, um, yeah. That's annoying. Let's find out which one's not making connection. Oh, it's going through the diode. I'll be able to tell that one. So it's the positive side. Hmm. 
I think it's because this wire is too thick, it's not going into that connector. It's not pushing down like it needs to, insulation's in a way. nothing oh for god's sake no standard cable works fine standard standard cable work i'm just gonna bloody i've got enough of this i'm not gonna piss around this anymore this is sold with burning things on <laughs> it would be nice to use a drill connector let's just solder them on not mess around anymore put the connector back in place and stay there as original. I'll just solder the wire straight on because it's just it's just gonna be easier. Although that said, before I do that, I also want to pull this PCB out and do these um, capacitors. Hmm. I do have point one inch sockets and crimps. Somewhere, I do have some. Hmm. Should I roll out something? Not having done something stupid first, shall I? Let's just strip a bit of this off. Just in case I did something silly, I'll put the diode in backwards. Let's just recheck the backlight actually works in situ like this. Yeah, it does. So it's purely connection issue. Like I said, I want to do this capacitor. So before, I mean, I do want to put a plug on here. Really, I really want this to work. Could do a bit of a bodge. No, no, no. I should not bodge it. Let me have a look. Uh, terminals. Kind of wanted to keep the original connector. What if I soldered this and then shoved that in the connector then? Hey, what do you reckon? That's a little bit of a bodge, but I think it would work. The black wire was, was making connection, that's not this one, because I think the insulation's too thick. Let's try it this way. So I don't really want to solder onto the board. If I get this thing to take solder, it'd be great. It does take a bit to get the time to take solder. You have an ADT tool which might do a video. Use those types of connectors. Okay. Right, well, I'll try it this way. This has to make connection now, surely. <laughs> Next step is to solder the bloody thing in. <laughs> The 
So the black wire did make connection before, so I'm not too worried about that. I'll just show that one as it is. Still nothing, oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh dear. How hard can two wires be? <laughs> oh, you're joking me. Still will check this polarity in case I've got myself mixed up twice. Shall we? Okay, the the positive wire. How do I get that backwards twice? I have. I've got it backwards twice. How on earth did I manage that? I'm sure. It, uh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I've got it backwards again. Apparently, I'm a moron. <laughs> I'll turn this around again. Oh my god. Oh, you saw me check this before. <laughs> Can we get in there? Who would have thought it would take this much effort? Come on, get in. Right. Hey! <laughs> Put the cover on, walk away. Oh, look at that. It, it's intermittent. Oh, you... Which one's intermittent? I think it's a black one which is intermittent. Turning the black one and shoving in might be an option after all. Because if you have opened it up, it was shoving a screwdriver in there. Let's just try and pinch them together too. Alright, let's try again. There we go, that's better. Right. It works. Let's stop there. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Right, brilliant. Let's go in now. We can put the front bit back together. Once I take the bit to film off. Yeah, the blue, blue display is not as nice as the old one. You're definitely not. Um, the orange was definitely much nicer, but you couldn't bloody see it, could you? Not really. So that was the issue there. Would be nice to have kept it to original. I mean, it's a shame about the display, but oh well. It's the way it is sometimes. Sometimes there's no choice. I mean, I could have put a green one in there, but I thought, ah, oh, 
I was actually tossing up between green and the um, and the blue. And I thought the only reason I chose the blue is because this is a piece of gear which isn't going to get much use, and I didn't want to um, have it wasted. Really, like the blue display. I don't particularly like blue displays that much, so that's why I put it in this because it doesn't really matter. It's not like it's a piece of gear which is going to get used a lot. So I'd rather save the decent displays for the things which you're going to use them. Right. Well, don't play us. <laughs> it's done. Let's take a picture of that. Ish. Hold on. Turn it slightly nicer, I suppose. Take a picture of that. And get your focus even. So you want to do it further away. Reason being is I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do as far as laying up before and after shots. To figure that out. So if I do it further away, I can. Uh, Move them around as required. Yeah, that was easy job. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, that, I mean, it looks alright. Now, I think this original um, display contrast adjustment isn't used now. Let's have a look. Yeah, it does nothing now. It's no longer functional. Because the display's got it built in. Alright. More video on this. So there you go, it's the front panel back together. Display is in, that looks much better than it did before. Well, it's visible now. I don't think it looks better. <laughs> I actually really like the orange display. That looked quite nice. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of the blue displays. The reason I use the blue on this one is because this is a device which isn't going to get much use. And I'd rather save my nicer looking displays for bits of equipment which might need a nicer looking display. This is fine for this. It's it's alright. But it works. That's the main thing. And um, it took a bit of effort getting the body connected to work. That's all working now, so let's use the original connector just there. Positive is the top side there. <laughs> top rail was the positive one. Five volts coming in. Yeah. So the next thing I do, now we've got the display done, pull the board out, change its capacitors. Red display. Um, I haven't seen one that size. I mean, I've seen them smaller, but they're not very common. One thing it also has is it's got a tendency to wobble. One of the feet, I think, has got a piece missing. Or it's something wrong with it, or it's not, it's different, it's not the same foot. That's the original foot, this is not. It's a different foot. I do actually have some feet, I think. I might, maybe I'll swap them out at some point. Anyway, new cap should be easy. Yeah, what could go wrong there? <laughs> right, so they've got two connectors here which look like the same. So watch out for that. I've got five pins. Don't get those mixed up. Um, I should mark these with a small pin. And, uh, okay. And the same for these. This one line up, that one. These can't get mixed up, that can't get mixed up. 
Right. It sits on the back. That can unplug. That can unplug. Right, everything just plugs in. Once I get it apart. So I've got to pull this board out of this thing. Now one thing is these two plugs here, they both got five pins on them. And they're both the same type of plug. So if you pull this thing apart yourself and when to reassemble it, it's there's a possibility you could get in the back to front. And that could be quite a bad thing seeing as one of these comes from the transformer. <laughs> yeah, watch out for that. It's only got four wires, but it's got a five pin plug. Um so I've actually marked these with a line so you can't get them mixed up hopefully um, anything else just plugs in so it shouldn't be too hard I'm gonna um, take the side panel off this because you've got to get this bracket here unmounted off the side panel the regulators are mounted on that's got to come off and then we can unplug everything and um, take the screws out and lift the board out so we've got to start on this side here Another panel, we've got two panels to take off apparently. There we go, there's the screws to that bracket there, which have captive setups on there, so I'm just about to take these screws out. So let's unplug everything and then take the screws out. One thing we'll shout for are these IC socket types. When you put them back in again, don't accidentally bend a pin. Or don't hook them on things when you're trying to take the board out and things like that, because they can happen, they can get hooked up. And you can easily bend a pin if you're not careful. Now it's got dip switches over here, I should point this out. Make it, up, make it out of these in case you bunch them. In case you bunch them. Make it out of the dip switches in case you bump them. So in this state they are all to the right apart from number eight. Number eight is facing the other way. Make it out of that in case you knock them when you're moving the board around. Lock washers on them. That wasn't very tight. Something I should probably do on this as well is actually um, pull the EEPROM and make a backup of it. I doubt there's any backups of these EEPROMs anywhere. Well, this EEPROM anywhere. I think there's not one more screw over here. Board is now moving. Something always scares me. Like I watch, I'm sorry, guy. I know he watches my channel too. Sometimes, so hello. Um, it's when he's pulling a piece of gear apart. He seems to be quite rough with getting the bits of gear apart. He's it's, it's not very delicate with them. I always, I always look at it sort of cringing, thinking, "Oh, God, you're going to rip something or 
scratch a trace off or something or rip a component off because it's got snagged on something so, it's, yeah it just, it just scares me it always does right because he yeah, has reasonable success but um it does worry me a little bit so we've got some bodges on the back here let's have a close look at this chat chat Okay, I guess later on. So there's the board. You've got some resoldering work over here. And you've got some bodge wires. Look like factory originals. Potentially, anyway. But yeah, flux left on the board there and over here. So that's repairs or something's been done later on. Makes me think it's repairs because it's the only bits left on there. Maybe I'll give those a clean up. I just don't like to see those left with flux on. And something I forgot to point out is when we're looking at the front panel there, we pull that front panel apart to do a display. Add a date on there of 1980 something. Um, I think it was 88 I think it said 1988 on the back of the display on the actual back of the panel so um, on the on the frame one like the actual bezel here it's printed on the back of that um, yeah anyway I'll put some um, IPA on these get this flux softening up because it's not going to be easy to get off and on here as well put some there too just for the sake of cleanliness there's a bit there too and we'll change these caps out so what do we need 16 volt 4700 uh, same physical size and this is a 25 volt so that'll do is that one what else we need? 25 volt 100 microfarad and they're all the same 25 volt 100 microfarad okay bunch of them Suntan, I don't want to use suntan in this. Mm -hmm. There's one there. What brand's that one? Ichicon. So we find three the same, eh? This drawer is particularly full, so it's a bit hard to get them out. I'll try and get the drawer open. Which is good that I need to use something because I've got too many in this drawer, it would seem. That's massively big, it's under volt cap, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really want something smaller than that. Okay. Don't want a suntan, you want a better quality one than that in this. What are these ones? 25 volts, perfect. Nitty cons. Yep. And that's three the same. I mean, the Suntan caps are okay, but the quality is just not the same. It's alright if it's a, like a piece of consumer gear, which isn't going to last very long, you know, it's going to be around for a couple of years. Yeah, maybe. Um, but something like this, which I want to keep going for another you know, 20 years, and um, yeah, don't want to use a cheap cap for that. I want to use good quality caps for that. I'm still having trouble getting this drawer shut. I'm dropping caps everywhere. Well, this is a few less in there. Okay. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm, there's at least one EEPROM in here, which has obviously got the cover over it. It's got a sharp device here, I don't know what that is. Maybe someone wants to look it up. I don't know, that's a PROM as well. Don't I? 1988. So LH5164D-10L. Maybe it's a RAM. We've got these other things up here. Whatever they are. Don't know what those are. It could be GPIB stuff actually because that's GPIB connectors. It's probably GPIB controllers up here. So yeah, that, that could be a RAM, that could be a, a ROM. But I could pull that one out. It's definitely, I'd, I'd have to do it later on. But I'm thinking about doing that. Two more listeners. Oh, you are. You're right. There's two more. Missed. Good spotting. What are those? Um, so focused on the power supply. What's that? 25 volt, 10 microfarad. And again. And the tens are the ones I had out just now. These ones. Uh, what size are these? That's a 50 volt. Strangely. 35 volt. I want to be the same. I want it all to match. 35 volt. Okay. Place my cats with those as well then. Yep, that is definitely it. Okay. Yes, RAM. Yeah, okay. So it's just that top one then. So 27C256 hyphen 20 slash J. I've got the data RAM programmer. I'll just have to hook that up to my wife's computer because it's a PC based thing. I do have a Mac one, but it's really erratic. <coughs> In fact, I don't think it even works on my new system now. Yeah, so I've got the data RAM one. Which I have to use. I've done the reforms out of that. I did that for someone. Um, I can't remember his name now. I can't remember his name. It's for one of the Bunton um, modulation meters. I can't remember the model number for that now. Yeah, it's modulation meter. But they emailed me saying, "Can I dump the ROM? Because they've got one which isn't working and needing the ROM." And um, so it wasn't much to get the thing apart and, and like this, you know, top cover sort of thing. So I went and fished it out and pulled the ROM off that and uh, dumped it on uh, KO44BB and I think I put it on XDEVs as well maybe, or a couple, I put it on a couple of places and obviously sent it to him too. So that was right. Yeah, 10 microfarads at the upper level of ceramics. I mean, you can do it, but I think ceramics have a tendency to break. <laughs> so, although these, you know, have a finite lifetime, I trust these more than ceramics, because ceramics can just randomly fail and short out. Whereas this will just age and not be so good. Um, I mean, obviously they can short out too, but it's not so common. Right, um, let's desolder these caps. So it's two more capacitors which I missed, which um, are here, 10 microfarads, so I've got to change those as well. So let's just pop these ones out. I'm going to push my first shoulder on it first, once I find out where I put my solder. And then we'll desolder it with a desoldering gun. Or a desoldering iron. First solder just helps to get the things out. I can also just... Um, these actually have flux on them like maybe someone's already changed them because there's flux residue here there's not the ones in the power supply but these two have got flux residue like they've been changed already interesting maybe someone maybe someone's already been here once don't forget the middle screw was loose so maybe someone has already been here or just the fact you clean it up I don't know it's also possible 
<clears throat> Don't forget the orientation. Negative this way. They do actually have it marked on the board, but sometimes they're wrong. <laughs> so there is a positive, yeah, there is a positive marked on that side and a positive marked on this side, which are correct. Don't always assume the markings on the PCB are correct. Sometimes they're not. Now this is a rather old PCB with really thin traces, so this would be very easy to damage if you're not careful. I'm actually thinking I might just do a solder blob technique and then clean the holes out afterwards. See how that goes. Yeah, I think I might do that way. These aren't doing great. More worried about damaging the PCB than anything else. So I'll just do it that way instead. Sometimes it's the best way to get them out. Just heat up both legs at once, wiggle the part out, also I'll get the heat through the ball because it's double sided board. The part's getting pretty hot <laughs> and it is moving. There we go, there's one. Repeat the same thing for this one. Set that one up. So the hole's cleared out. Sometimes that's the easy way of doing it. Yeah, it is a nice board. It definitely is a nice board. Let's uh, clean this up a bit here first. Polarity shortly goes to the, the, black, the positive way. That's right, and shortly goes to positive. Obviously, I'm joking. Hopefully, you know that. If you don't know that, don't listen to me. The long leg goes to the positive, or the end with the stripe. Usually, goes to the negative. I have seen capacitors where it's the other way around. Watch out for that. It can happen. Try and get the heat through the board as well. Things be good as new, hopefully. Still got three more caps to change. Make sure more stuff on this because these are lucky. Keep them. Bit moisture, try and help them dry up. Oh, 
Right. I'll take these ones out and I'll come back. Um, the best way of removing solder that's been attacked by a le leaking literally bat. Just raw solder. Same with lots of flux in it. Plenty of flux, fresh solder, and just keep flooding it, and it will eventually take it off. And then wick it if you can. But be really careful because it will probably look, take the traces off the board because of the chemical corrosion. I think Ian's actually done a good video on it. I think it was, was it Keithley you were working on, Ian? I think it was. He had one which had leak capacitors, remember rightly? And that made quite a mess. So, orientations for these. There are positive marks on the board and they're the right way around. Great. We can trust those then. Q2001, six parter, yeah, yeah. That was quite an involved one. Unfortunately, his legs are a bit far apart, so we only go, go one to the other. I'm only using 270 degrees as well, it's not particularly high heat, but on these kinds of boards you don't want to go too hot anyway because you end up having the, the traces lift off the board, so I tend to run it quite low. If it's a more modern board I wouldn't be worried about putting it like 350 or something, but uh, these older boards I don't like a lot of heat, the traces will lift off. There we go, out. I mean, this iron here is set at 350, but it tends to need it because it seems to lag behind the temperature slightly. I think it's only about 320 in reality. And when you're doing these sorts of things, like desoldering, you need it to uh, soak through the ball quite well and quickly. So you're not dwelling on it too long either. Anyway, that's that done. We should also go through and test these capacitors, shouldn't we? See what they actually come out like, the original ones. See how bad they really were. Put the new ones in.
I mean, I could put flux on these and help them flow through and not have to dwell so much or so long with the soldering iron. But um, it just makes more mess, which then needs cleaning off. And I'm, I'm, I'm finding this is actually flying well enough to not need to worry about doing it. I'll just grab some more footage, I suppose. I should have put some flux on. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Right, solder these things on. My hand's probably going to be in the way. Bit of dry time to get the solder to flow through the board. Especially when the ones with the traces on the top side. My iron's not very hot, it's only 290 degrees. I don't use a lot of heat on the iron, especially on these older boards, because I don't like it. The uh, If you use too much heat on an older PCB like this, the adhesive will actually detach, and the traces will just lift off the board. So always use lower heat as possible on older circuit boards. I mean, there's two scores of thought, I suppose. You could say you use the low heat for a long time, and just take it gently and just only have as much dwell time as you need or the other way is to use a lot of heat and get it done quickly and not give it a chance to actually soak into the board and that's true too but I actually found that technique doesn't work that well all the time depends on what you're doing but generally I found using a lower heat and dwelling slightly better on these older boards is um, better for them they just don't like the high heat and the high heat will get there pretty quickly to the adhesive which is underneath the pad you're soldering onto so I found generally better to use a lower heat and take a bit longer on the older boards new boards I'd use a lot of heat and a bit in there you know quick be in there in and out quite fast but uh, new older boards I tend to be slower hey for your house right. Alright, let's try and get this old flux off. It's all really got a lot better, just to be me soaking it. Yeah, yeah, not too bad for the house. It's um, still getting over this bloody COVID thing, even though it was a few months ago. I'm still not over it. Otherwise, I'm alright. Mostly just bloody coughing. Otherwise, I feel fine, really. I did have fatigue issues, and it's just finally started to get better. Um, fatigue was the other thing. I, you know, I have to go and have a sleep in the middle of the day, and I still do have to do that sometimes. It's, get, it's been getting better the past couple of weeks. It's actually been starting. That part's been starting to get better. So that said, yesterday I was going to have a sleep. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yesterday is actually the first day off I've had in months. I did very little yesterday, I didn't do any video editing, I did nothing, I just sat around, watched a couple of videos, relaxed a bit, listened to some music, like the first proper day off I've had in months. It was quite nice. Okay, that's looking way better. 
Let's reassemble it. Turn these off. And there was a board on the bottom side. I don't remember if that had any capacitors on it or not. Maybe it did. Not sure. Connectors are here. <laughs> Nothing pinned under the board. First thing I always do, actually, I'll record this because this is a good tip. Whenever I'm refitting a circuit board, one of the first things I actually do, because there's a chance of getting cables trapped underneath the board, is I actually go around, if I can, and plug the connectors in. So before I actually put the screws in, I go around and plug in the connectors because. Sometimes it will actually point out that, hey, I've missed one. <laughs> it can happen. So, obviously sometimes they can be in the way of other things, but usually they're okay. So, I plug them all in, and there's nothing left to plug in, then we should be good. This one I'll leave unplugged, because we'll get these other screws, it's going to be in the way of that, that's fine. And that one there will go there. And that is everything. Okay, there's no more plugs, no more connectors. Haven't left anything underneath the board. It's just a nice little tip to make it easier so you don't mess that up. Now, because we've got this bracket on the side, which is for the heat sinks on these regulators here, I'm actually going to put a little bit of thermal paste behind that. I'm just drip, drip a little bit on the back, just a little bit along there. Then I'll attach it to the chassis, just to make sure the chassis is taking the heat away. There is nothing there from factory, but there's no harm in adding a little bit. And then I actually attach this first, but I'll probably put these PCB screws in, not tighten them, just get the alignment right. Then I put these ones in, that will then be aligned up and tighten these ones first, because this is obviously the critical thing. Um, the ball can move around, but if you put this ball down first and then attach the bracket, you can actually pulling, you can be pulling on a PCB and you can be stressing it and, and trying to bend it. So it's best not to do that, especially with regulators, because you can actually crack the traces on the, um, the pads on the regulators. So put the screws in, align everything, then do the bracket first, then do the PCB. There's always a reason to do it a certain way. Right. Be methodical, it's quite important sometimes. Sometimes it really doesn't matter, you can just chuck it into the act to get any other way. But sometimes it does matter. Like I said, right now it's going to get these screws lined up. And of course they're the tricky things to make sure you don't forget to do them back again afterwards. Let's get them like 90% of the way in. They're not pinched. This has taken way longer than I thought it was going to take. <laughs> My wife would say it's a common thing. I always underestimate how long things are going to take. And I always give her a stick for that, actually. I always give her trouble. So, oh, she always underestimates how long things are going to take. You know, she'll say, oh, it's going to take 10 minutes. And I'll say, it's going to take a half an hour. <laughs> and I seem to have the same thing when it comes to doing electronic repairs. Um, it seems to happen. I don't know if it's because it's doing videos. I think it's because I'm doing videos and doing the chat and talking to everyone as well at the same time. I think that slows it down quite a bit compared to what I'd normally be if I was just sitting here to do it myself without any interaction. I think that's what the issue is there. It just makes it take a little bit longer. Oh, dropped it. Bloody flip. 
fat light screwdrivers. <laughs> Some of the crosshead they don't slip off. one in there. Now of course these are countersunk screws also their alignments. texting me well it could be quick if I just record this video in fact ah oh, yes the heat sink on down damn it thanks David <laughs> we could just pretend we did it I can probably just squeeze something down the back there I'll be able to slip or something down there. Let me get some out. I'll squeeze a bit down the back. It won't be messy at all, honest. Push it down the back there with a tweezer. And this is, so it's still going to be better than the original. I mean, the original didn't have anything at all. So it's still going to be an improvement, isn't it? Even a little bit is going to be better than nothing. Chip with the testers. Get this to tighten down first. Let me check, see what that is. It is Mrs. Def Palm. Okay, Mrs. Death Palm is currently over in Australia visiting her parents. Because her parents immigrated over there and just popped over for the weekend to go and see them. A little place to myself, apart from stepson who's also here, one of the stepsons. check so tight 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 okay that's all the screws let's repair it you ready for magic smoke you should definitely uh, get rid of get rid of Rico get rid of bloody hell string a sentence together Definitely get ready to record video. 
just in case it does. How much of the flight is in into Australia? Um, a few hundred bucks, I think. It's not too expensive. I think it's something like four or five hundred bucks, maybe. Turn it off. Record footage. Right, so I've replaced the capacitors, refitted the ball, plugged everything back in again. Everything's probably plugged into the correct place. Let's power it back up and see if it goes bang or if there's any smoke. When your capacitors explode because I put them in backwards despite double checking because you know how that goes. Beautiful, still works. No bangs yet, we'll give it a second. We're looking good, okay. <laughs> dip switches are still in the right place. Always double check the dip switches. They haven't been knocked and they're still correct. Right, that's excellent. That's that project just about done. Just got to put the top back on again and the side panel, obviously, which we took off to get to this piece here. And um, oh, we should check the capacitors. We need to see what the caps are like. Then we'll work on something else. I might go and grab something a drink before we start the next project. Sent me a massive, big, long text. I better go and read that, I suppose. Give me a second. <sighs> She's asking for advice how they set up a as phone with a car stereo uh, asking how it will work I said well I don't actually know because it depends on the stereo it depends on the car <laughs> um, a few variables there you can't see what I'm doing can you it's reassembling the side plate That's helpful, honey. Oh, I said no idea. <laughs> I suppose I better put a bit more effort into this. Give me a second. Um, There you go. In fact, you get no proper response this time. That'll probably make it a bit happier. That's that. That's that. Put the top cover back on. Whoever those screws are. There they are. Trying to hold my soldering iron. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you want to, you want to take, make off with it again, won't you? Every time I leave this room, he tries to grab my soldering iron. I don't know why. I'm sure his soldering iron is better than mine. Right. Let's check the capacitors. Not for that, lose them. Oh, well, it's gone on the floor, doom now. Right. 
to change a few things you can do it <clears throat> oh, you're going blind now Oh, what have we got here? 100 hertz, that'll do. Okay. Right, let's check these capacitors and see what we're actually getting. So we'll start with the biggest one, which is a 4700 microfarad. That's a bit low. Yes, yeah, so I put That looks alright though, but the capacitance is a bit low. Forty-seven minutes right on like ten percent low. So, hmm. So this one here, I'm gonna do three of them in the in a row, which is the one hundred microfarads, twenty-five volts, one point one ohms, ninety-eight. Yeah, not too bad. Next one, 96, 1.01, slightly better. Nothing horrendous so far. 1.4, there you go, this one's on the way out. So yes, this one was on the way out. The one is caps, does actually look like it's slightly bulged. Interestingly, is the second one I tested. Yeah, so, let me see it on these or not, but middle one it's got a very slight bulge in the top which is why I actually wanted to recap it and that was one that measured reasonably okay all right got these other ones now which are the 10 microfarads and get a decent connection get nine that's 12 ohms that's up there isn't it and the next one Eleven ohms. Yeah, they're a bit on the high side, really. Um, let's look at the chart here. I mean, it says nineteen ohms worst case, but I don't know. To me, they seem a bit high. They seem a bit on the high side to me. For the sleep, oh dear, wasn't that boring? I suppose it's the time of day where you are, really. And I'm that boring. <laughs> oh dear. It's a shame about the sticker on the side. That snapped. I caught it and it snapped. It's like a plastic backed sticker. At least it's still kind of intact. It's not too bad, but it's a shame. Not perfect like it was before. Apart from the top piece, anyway. Okay, I think that's that one done. Um, what are your opinions on those capacitors? Those ones which measured 11 ohms, which is these smaller ones here. I think they're a little bit on the high side. I thought I would have expected to see a bit less than that, probably sort of five, six, maybe. You know, for this sort of size. I don't know. Opinions? What do you reckon, Ian? I could always check them against a new one. And I'll just turn it off, didn't I? That's silly. Let me check it against a new one. Mm. We'll check it against the type I put in. Is that the same one? Yeah, 35. This is what I put in. Yeah, and this is this is exactly what I thought. So this is a brand new one. All right, 
So there you go, 6.5, brand new cap. Obviously slightly low with nine ohms, uh, nine microfarads. Let's try another one, different type. Try to get my fingers in here, all right. Yeah, ten microfarad, three point two ohms. So yeah, that that eleven, I'm pretty sure is wrong. So this is a fifty volt cap. So yeah, it's it was on the highest side of where I think it should be. Right. So, next thing we need to look at is another project. Um, I've done that, I've done a feature of that already. Okay, let's see, put it on one side now, it's done. Um, these are the cables that came with, I think I showed these before. I've got these special two pin plugs that go into this type because it's offset center pin. It's not actually in the middle, it's slightly off to one side. So this actually came with two cables and they got spade connections on them. That's quite surprising. I wasn't expecting to have that, but I thought it'd be like a plug to plug because this is meant for plugging directly into the front of another calibrator. Well, of a um, OF power meter. You plug it from this straight into the front of the power meter and then you set the range up on this to match the range on the power meter and you should get 90% of full scale on each range. So, time for more difficult repair. <laughs> Yeah, that was the easy one. Let's get this out of the way. I'll go and grab myself a drink and come back. And then we'll look at something else. Actually, we'll do a vote. And we'll see which thing we're going to look at. Let's put this on my wife's desk because she won't notice. Because she's not here. Be right back. Taking a washing up liquid with me. Oh, well, I'll take it back. Right. <clears throat> Clear some space on my chair because I'll dump stuff on it whilst I was sitting over there. Drink. It's a V. I don't recommend V. It's all right because I'm sitting here. That's what I've got. I don't need this. I want these cans of V. It will last me two, three days. Normally, I don't drink that much of it. Just sipping it occasionally. <clears throat> right. So, next thing. I need to do a poll to see what we're going to do. If I can get this to work. I clicked on it and now it's not doing anything. Oh, there we go. Took a while. Come on, this is going really slow. Um... Wow, this is dragging. This is just crawling along. I click on it, it's just taking ages to respond. Hmm. Hi, Oliver. How's it going? Um, there's that. And. And. Um, hmm. And, oh, 
course, uh, it's two things so far. Come on, hurry up. It's low, so leggy. Actually, what I should do is, whilst I'm thinking, I should be eating. So I'm not trying to talk at the same time. Snack bar. Breakfast. My local time is nearly, well, it's about 20, well, 24 minutes past 11 a.m. That's a good question. What is a big HP thing? I've forgotten what it is. They're sitting there so long. Okay, here we go, there's your options. So I've finally got started getting some time to myself again because for months I've been working on preparations for a national event I worked at. And I had to have it perfect. I spent like two months just writing code, just two months doing code. For the actual event and um the event's done with so now i can actually move on and do other things that i want to do and spend more time working on bits of test gear and stuff like that which is great because i've just had no time i've been trying to cram it all going in and keep the videos going that sort of stuff and i haven't been able to sort of dedicate as much time as i want to spend on it as i'd like to so now i'm getting to that point now one of the other projects i want to do is up here the adventist um what the hell is it r6581t the eight and a half digit multimeter because of the spine that is really bad and i really want to start digging into that and trying to reverse engineer the protocols it uses to see if i can actually replace that display now there is a thread from mickey t on the blog forum and he's done a lot of reverse engineering on this unit he's put a lot of effort into the work he's done to that is it's been invaluable um, and he's only just started to look at the display side and digital side of it and he's published some posts recently about it and they already helpful and um, so I'm looking at what I can use to replace the display because it is a bit dim I did a video about it and I did get it brighter but it's still not great so I do want to do a project on that and actually pull it apart and probe up the scope and, and try and interface and seal protocol and try and decode it and see what I can do to actually replace the display with something more common um, with something that will fit obviously that's the biggest problem but that's something I want to do but that's going to take a lot of time a lot of effort and um, yeah 
You know, the time you get your casting vote. I don't know about that. Oh, the A six seven two A should be easy. You reckon? Have you seen the size of the manual for that thing? This is the service manual for it. Easy is not the thing that comes to mind when you can't think about the unit. <laughs> uh, what's the Wi-Fi now? Hmm. Hold on, I'm just trying to help him with something. Right. No light reading there, yeah. I've got 28,000. Yeah, well, almost. Um, pretty, well, it's nearly 27.3 now. Nearly. It's, it, it rounds down on the YouTube thing. Oh, God, now what? Right. My wife is helping her parents or her dad out with a, um, a phone, iPhone synchronization with his computer and try and get it to work on his car as well. Normally, when I, when I lived over here, every time I went to the house, I'd be there doing these kinds of projects with them, syncing bits of technology together and fixing bits of technology and uh, getting things to work the way they wanted. Uh, that's what I'd be doing. I'd go there, you'd socialise a bit, you know, have dinner and sort of stuff, and then I'd go and fix some their problems. <laughs> and uh, because my wife's gone over to Australia, because I haven't been over there to see them um, since they went over there. Um, she is now having to deal with their technological problems. Bit of sarcasm, no. <laughs> that wasn't sarcasm, was it, David? <laughs> she is two or three hours behind. That's what Australia is, two or three hours, something like that. There's not much difference. She's in... Um, Brisbane. Yeah, she's in Brisbane. Actually, I should get this footage off this SD card when I think about it. I like to do it in clumps. <clears throat> that way it just makes it easier to deal with each project when I'm doing videos. So I can just grab that bunch of footage, dump in a folder, next project, next folder, and that way it keeps it all organised nicely. Um, I've already got a folder for this one, I've just got to drag this stuff in. And then empty the SD card off. So we'll check the poll so shortly and see what's winning. I hope it's something small that fits on my desk. As in, not the HP 8672A. That ain't small. <laughs> it does need fixing, though. It does need working on. And I do want to get it done, because I would like to get it out of this room, because it won't stay in here once I've fixed it. It'll go out to my other room and be out there and um, basically be in storage until the time I need to use it. <clears throat> No copy surprisingly quickly. Oh no, no it's still going. Yeah, thought it finished already. No, it hasn't. Couldn't see it. Right. What's the poll saying? You just finished a 8165A. 8165A. That sounds familiar. Hold on. Or maybe, maybe you told me about that before, maybe?
Honest looking, yeah. No, I haven't worked on one of those. Maybe I've looked at one before, thinking I might get one. I've got something that looks very similar to that. Say, um, what was it? <clears throat> I think it's a modulation analyzer, some of that. Did a video about that ages ago, a couple of years back. So what was wrong with the uh, 8165A? Just needed recapping, did it? It's always caps. It's always caps. Got 909 now. Well, this is not 404. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what you're doing. <coughs> Anyway, I think part of the problem with my channel, I think I had the discussion with you guys before, is that because I do a mix of different kinds of videos between like the mailbags, the repairs and reviews and things like that, and I do this, I don't know, confusing target audience, I suppose. The channel doesn't grow as quickly as it could. If I just did only repair videos, the channel would grow quicker, right? Um, because each video would be interesting to the same people and each and there's a good chance that most people would watch them if I only did mailbag videos same thing it probably just grow constantly because I've got a mixture people don't watch every video they might watch one or two of the three if I do three they might not watch two of them or only only one of the two because they're not interested in mailbag or not interested in repairs or whatever it may be and so it actually hinders the channel because I do it that way um, and it's so I'm aware of it as being an issue with the way YouTube works. You know, if YouTube presents you with two videos and you only watch half of them, then it doesn't look too good for the channel, right? So the channel doesn't um, seem as popular because you don't watch all the videos. So that's just the way it works. So watch every video if you want. If you're not interested, no, I can't say that because that's actually not true. But, um, you know. You have to be careful with it. Um, but yeah, only watch what you're interested in. But it's just the way it works. It's a trade off. See, I emptied it. This is not empty in the bin. My computer's been weird today. Hmm. Alright. This do bad videos, nobody watches. Well, you should see some of my very early videos. Not many people have, because based on the view counts, people don't go backwards, right? So, um, when I've done nearly 1,200 videos now, actually on YouTube, and the view counts for the older stuff, you can see that people just don't go backwards. People just don't watch the old stuff. So, if I've done some interesting repairs and things like that, in the very early days, people haven't watched them because they're just going backwards. They only look at what comes out from now on. You know, if say someone registers, uh, subscribes today, they might look at what I've done in the past week or two, or maybe past month or two, and then watch all you know what I've done from then onwards. Now, I don't know if it's because YouTube don't suggest any of my older stuff. That's quite likely. I don't suggest my older stuff. Or people just don't look at the video history because I've got so many. You have to go to the home page, click on videos, and then you see the video history. And you, you just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. And I've got loads and loads of videos. And some of the really early stuff has got very few views. You know, less than 100, some of them. Um, they're quite bad for that because those are just what they got at the time when I was growing the channel. Look at the old TV repair ones. Yeah, I haven't actually done that many CB videos. I've done some. I've got some CBs I need to fix, actually. Um, I've got some stuff sitting there which have been sitting there for months. Um, 
again because I haven't had time I haven't really had the spare time to do anything apart from prepare for this national event which is now gone so um, you know every minute of my day I've been working so that's finished with now so I can try and catch up with other things and part of that is catching up with these radios that are sitting there um, these are my radios so. my wife actually went to a um, a car boot fair sort of thing or it kind of is but it's more of a gauge sale well gauge sale is probably more accurate um, and she found these two CVs they're identical like a pair and um, the unit in 510E's I think they are and um, she sent me a picture said um, you know should I get these I went yeah what do I want you know the price was right so I said yeah sure I'll get them and um, so they've been sitting on my desk for maybe a year <laughs> waiting waiting for me to get, touch them and I've got a, a bunch of radio I think I've probably got a dozen radios there to fix of my own which I need to get onto I was having a chance I don't even use radio anymore I mean I just fix the things you know, from time to time I actually had people contact me recently to fix radios and I just haven't had the time so I haven't even replied to them um, I had two or three people email me and I haven't even replied because like well I can't really say I don't do them anymore because I kind of would if I had the time I don't have the time I don't know when I'm going to get the time and so it didn't go any further than that I mean considering when I started doing YouTube the idea of it was to actually um, do videos about the CV repair work I was doing you know and showing what problems come up, what is done to fix these problems, because I'd see um, patterns. You know, a certain radio would have the same kind of fault over and over again. And so, if you could document that, it makes it easier to fix. Uh, anyway, that's that drink finished. <clears throat> Need to have a short and 15 volt rail. Ram chip as well. Ooh. Ah, damn it, I was going to pull that, buddy. Must not forget to pull that EEPROM out. I need to pull that EEPROM out and, and read that EEPROM. Must not forget. I probably will forget before I put it back away again. Because it's going to go back out into my other room. And, um, yeah, once it's out there, I, I probably won't be, I'll be too lazy to go and get it and bring it back in. <laughs> right, so let's look at the pole. How's the pole going? Oh, that's not good. People want the HP 8672A. I need a bigger disc first. <laughs> no, we can do it. We can have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, it's the thing. Sometimes you just have to prioritise other people's stuff and your stuff just gets pushed behind. Like the stuff I've got. I've got those radios sitting there for years waiting for me to do them. You went for the DVD player? Yeah. I asked. Yes, it's true. I did ask. I, I should have left that one off the list. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, a DVD player is not something I'm going to keep anyway. It's just, it's just a little portable one. See here? Just here. Um, no audio. No audio output. Um. But we're not going to keep it anyway, we've got no use for it, so the idea is to fix it and then just give it to like Salvation Army or something like that so they can set it off for you know, 10 bucks or whatever. Um, we've got no use for it, so I'll just give it away. But I just need to fix it first so we can actually can give it away. Not by giving it to someone when it doesn't actually have it or sound. <clears throat> it's 
really come out here. Oh, it's 232. Hmm. Could give it to the fifth person. True. That's thinking outside the box a little bit there. I'd rather fix it. <laughs> You've had it twice doing what you wanted. That's just, that was more YouTube channels. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, we're going to look at the generator. I don't mind looking at it. It's just that it's not easy to look at on the bench. I haven't opened it up yet. I haven't powered it up even. Um, it's been sitting here ever since I got it. At least six months now. Um, and I do want to get some floor space back by getting it done. I don't know if you can even fix it today. It might be a case of looking, open it up, seeing what we even need to do to fix it, and then um, ordering parts as possible. I know it's got bad caps. Whether I've got the caps, I'm say, whether I've got the caps that's required to fix it, I don't know yet. No idea. Right. Let's get my desk cleared off and get some space on it because I'm going to need it. Now I've got, I've actually got a capacitor box on the back here. <coughs> Let's say I should have done a video, uh, option on was this thing. I think I showed you guys this before. Um, anyway, I've got a box on the back here for all these capacitors, but it's full. I can't fit any more caps in there. Maybe some small ones. Maybe. <laughs> this one's falling out somewhere. What's this one? That's a uh, 100 microfarad. Oh, great. It's this drawer. Really got to get some. Yeah. I, yeah. I've got to try and get this drawer shut again now. <laughs> I need to use some more 100 microfarad caps. I've got to see me in this drawer. Great. Come on. There we go. We've got it shut. Great. Walk away. <clears throat> Let's give it some rubbish or it's lying around. And another thing I've got over here <clears throat> is this. It's a hubometer. Is it? Top of motor home. Now these are called distance. Problem I've got with this one is it's faulty. The bearing is gone or something is ratty ratty a little bit. And I noticed that because over here we have to buy what's called road user chargers. So you pay for distance travel. It's for tax purposes, right? So you buy diesel, which is at a cheaper rate than petrol, although not by much cheaper anymore. It used to be about half the price. Now it's about two thirds the price. Or well, three quarters the price. It's um, or well, three quarters of the price, I should say. It's much more expensive than it used to be. Anyway, and then you got tax on top of that. So it's actually more expensive to run diesel now than it is to run a petrol. Hmm. Anyway, um, so the idea of these hubble motors is that these record distance, and you buy the mileage based off the hubble motor. And I've been noticing the past couple of times I've checked this, it's look, it didn't look as high as it should have been. It wasn't the Ks I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see, you know, a few hundred more K than was actually on it. So again, that's not right. So it's actually been lagging behind and running slow. Um, and I went back and checked a whole bunch of history on um, very specific information I've got stored for this thing, which is like the um, the um, safety checks on it, like the COF checks. It's called Certificate of Fitness for the vehicle. Um, I can't remember what they called overseas, but anyway, the safety checks that are done on the vehicle. And I record the odometer reading and the hubometer reading. So, and I've got a bunch of those going back a few years. <clears throat> and I went track back and documented it all, put in a spreadsheet and worked out how long this thing's been playing up for. And it's been about two years. It's been started playing up ago. So when COVID hit and the vehicle was left standing for a period of time because we weren't using it, that's when it seemed to fail, when it's left sitting for months and um, not being used. And after that point, it's been lagging behind. And it's been getting worse and worse. And the bearing's gone. It rattles. So I had to replace it. 
So once I get that finalized and it's all approved by the various government agencies, because I can't mess with this yet, this has to be potentially checked by the government to make sure it's not being fiddled with. Um, then once that's all finished with, I don't have to worry about it anymore, I might pull it apart and have a look inside and do a video about it because it might be interesting. Uh, anyway, that's another project I'm getting sidetracked by. <clears throat> Let's try and get this thing on the desk. Ah, man, it's heavy. Um, let's get rid of these because I need some more space. Now, I really actually wish I had more space in this room. But every time I mention wanting more space to my wife, she always mentions, oh, we should move. Uh, because she's really keen to move away from this area because of where we are. It's a nice enough area. The area is nice. But um, with global warming and what have you, um, she wants to go to some slightly higher ground. <laughs> I don't blame her. Um, I just... I quite like where we are. Anyway, but yes, yep. getting a bigger room would be nice. This thing weighs about probably 20 kilos or so, maybe even more. Probably about, yeah, I guess about 25. It's pretty heavy. Right. I think I need to move this tablet out of the way because it's not going to fit there anymore. Drop the fluke on the floor. It'll be broken now. <laughs> It'll be fine. Actually, I should put these glasses on as well. I was using before. Problem with this place, because it's a small space, I have to constantly tidy up around myself. So. When I finish something, I have to tidy up, otherwise I just don't have the room to do another one. So yes, it's a bit of a beast. Let me change camera views. Yes. Yeah, yeah, not much beast space left to work on this thing, is there? This net speed us at a match. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, let's get the tablet fired up in because it's got that sleep because it's been so long. So I've got to figure out how to get this thing apart. Shouldn't be too hard. Actually, I need to turn it around the other way so I can get to the back of it. <clears throat> but yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, it's big. There's not much bench space left. And I think I need to record video on this at the same time. That's why I get this test gear after all most of the time. So I can make videos about them. Today on the bench, I've got this HP 8672A. See if this is a good generator. Can't even say it. <clears throat> Today on the bench, we've got this A672A synthesized signal generator, which is a 2.8 
sorry, a 2 to 18 gigahertz generator. I had this thing sitting on my floor here waiting for me to get to it for about six months, maybe a bit longer than that. Finally getting onto it. And now I know it's got some issues with capacitors. Because it came with these. There's some capacitors in here. Um, yeah, and it's also like a battery pack as well, which is interesting, it's like a memory backup thing, which isn't installed. And it's, yeah, it's got some bits in here. So, yeah, um, we're not going to be powering it up, we're going to be taking it apart. Apart, like Dave says. Two nine five five, yeah. I've got a two nine five five in my other room there. I did a video on it, or a couple of videos on it, when I was repairing it. Um, yeah, that's. I've got quite deep benches. These are six hundred, I think they are. Is it nine hundred? I don't remember. Anything. No, it's not nine hundred. How deep is this bench? No one needs to know. It used to be about there. Eight hundred, almost. Probably about sort of seven fifty deep. Yeah, the bench top's about seven fifty deep. And really, there needs to be another 30 centimetres more than that. <laughs> but that's what I've got. So, um, yeah, I've got a T955 out in the other room, and that's got the same deal. I've got stuff stacked up on top of that as well. Um, a big, that's actually a bench that I made. I made that desk. Um, had like a metal frame, and I put some plywood on top of it. And quite a thick ply, and I made a, a quite a large table. And I think that one was 900 deep. Um, so that was better for that sort of thing. It was okay for that. But yeah. Anyway, I need to open this thing up and we'll see what's inside it. <sighs> okay, screw there, screw the bottom. And then I was just slide off. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. So we've got two screws here we've got to take out. That will allow us to slide the covers off and reveal the goodness inside. Hopefully, anyway. Okay, that's that one out. I think this one's out. Yeah, that's definitely out. Okay. Slide it back a bit. There's one cover. There's some big caps in there. I haven't got any of them. <laughs> some big ones it's like a little cover goes over top interesting right so there's also main power supply over here and all that section so okay it's actually not looking too bad it's basically there's four big caps that's sitting right here So there must be screwing types. So let's look at what we've got. I need to make notes of what these are so I can actually replace them and order in the right ones because I don't have them in stock. I can guarantee that. So let's flip this up. So yeah, screwing types. So you get to three of them. This one's got some little covers over it. It's interesting. I'll have to take the perspex here off. I want to get to these ones. I wonder why those ones aren't the same. That's interesting. Anyway, so it's got voltage references over here. So it tells you what the voltages are, where they are. Test points, you've got holes through it here so you can see them all. Yeah, let's get a closer look at that. So 
So there you go. Tells you your test points. You've got holes here to line up to each test point. So you can just shake, shove your probe through. And it's got that right across everywhere. Those little test point marks. Brilliant. That's really nicely done. It's only on this one board. The other two boards don't have that because they're the back, back planes. Um, so I should probably just sit here and have a little look around and see if I can see anything which looks problematic or if I can see any burnt marks or anything which could be a problem, which is obvious, but I don't think there is. I think this thing was basically... Oh, I'll get back out of it. So I think basically this thing here was working because when I purchased this there were photos of it generating a signal. So the person I got this from, I've forgotten his name now, it was so long ago, but he was actually really generous. He gave me some bits of test gear for free basically as well. Um, he was really good. Oh, I, can't, I can't wish I could remember his name. Um, I did mention it previously anyway. But um, he showed this thing working and he had actually swapped the capacitors out which is why I've got a bag of caps there. One of those is one of the original ones and it's done obviously substitutions and some other nice stuff there trying to make it work but he also knew they had bad caps he did tell me he had bad caps so that's fine um but he had had it working so I, it does appear to be functional it's just these caps need replacing so i need to find out what these spacings are um i mean five volt filter cap 20 volt filter cap minus 40 volt filter cap minus 10 volt filter cap so the voltages are marked on here as well so all I need is the screwing type. I don't have the screwing type caps. All of my ones are always soldering. So I've got caps which will probably meet these ratings without any trouble at all. Have you ever got the right capacity? Don't know yet. I have to pull them out and have a look. And um, then I also have to look at what I can do to actually replace them because I think I can't do it right now because I'm going to have to get the right parts. And I mean, I do have soldering caps, but. I don't like to solder in with a screwing type. I don't like to do that. I mean, I have done it in the past. Um, but if I can get a screwing type and they're not too expensive, that's the other thing. If they're too expensive, then I will solder a cap in. But um, yeah, I'll have to do some research on this, I think. But pull these ones out, I think, and have a look at them. See what we're getting. So shipping for this, Dave, um, this was actually, I got this locally. So um, this used to be ex-Navy, I think it's ex-Navy. So um, obviously a bunch of this stuff got auctioned off and there was some stuff available locally. And this other guy, Logix was his business name, I suppose. Um, he obviously managed to acquire some of these equipment and um, so then I've got it off him so is we actually had to meet up in Auckland you had to go and drive up he's, he's from up north and I'm from, from down here and we had to drive up and meet each other halfway and um, it's very generous of them to do that too so that was, that was all good but um, yeah so this is locally so shipping was not an issue in this case it could have been I mean, shipping was an option we could have actually done shipping instead of meeting up but it's a risk it doesn't make it in one piece I got a free cash Thanks for dropping by. Okay, thanks for dropping by with Dave. Catch you later. Um, yeah, so... Um, let's do some in-circuit tests. I'll drop it. So let's do some in circuit tests for this. Now this hasn't been powered up for months, so there won't be any power in these. You can we guarantee it. So let's just shut the probes on if I don't have them pulled out. And to check each one, see what they're looking like. So it says 0.46 ohms, 1200, 220. Sorry, 12,220 microfarad. 
one here. Point for ohms again for my thousand microfarad. And actually, I'm thinking that this one here having these different style for the screws because this is minus 40 volt supply. This one's all low voltage, so maybe that's been done for protection. So these can get some easily, but this one's obviously for protection only. So you don't accidentally touch a 40 volt rail. That's probably why I've done it. So this one here, 0.65 ohms, 11,000 microfarad. And this one here, 38,000 microfarad, 0.58 ohms. Well, the ESRs aren't looking too bad. Um, capacitances, I'm not sure. Maybe you have to have a look and see if that actually makes sense. But the ESRs aren't horrendous, so they might actually be alright. Although one of them's already been changed, like one of them's already been taken out, haven't they? Let's have a look at that. So the interesting thing is you've got this bag of bits here. Um, there's more capacitor there than I've got inside the unit. This one's yeah, this one's leaked. As you actually see corrosion at the bottom of it. This one's actually gone bad. This is leaked. There's some gunk on there. So yeah, that was actually definitely going. 13,025 volt. Let's quickly measure that one. Fourteen thousand point one five ohms. So ESR looks perfect, but it looks like it has been failing. So maybe the other ones are going the same way and actually are leaking slightly. So although they measure good, they probably aren't. I mean ESR, sorry, the capacitance increased slightly on that one. So it was maybe. I mean I don't know. You can't expect like a, a tolerance, you know, twenty percent. It's not exactly uncommon. So it could be nothing, but yeah. So we've got 4,200 there, we've got 8,700 there, can't see what this one is, it's got a strap around it as well. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to have to take these out and replace them. Um, maybe and just, or at least take them out and inspect them at the very least. But it's interesting that it came with so many capacitors. And this battery pack thing. What's the battery pack thing from? It was with something. It came with something. Which piece of gear was that with? Hmm. Maybe it's from something else I've worked on already. Right. What was the story of the battery pack? That's something else. What did I get that with? What did I get from him? Was that the WaveTech? Oh, the WaveTech signal generator. Maybe it's the WaveTech. Could have been from that. Anyway. So as far as general construction this thing goes, as is the case of all this old HP gear, it's beautiful.
suppose I should record some video on that actually. Let's do that. So with this older HP gear, this era, it's always beautifully constructed. You know, it's got these metal cans in here, everything's labelled. It's always really nice. They, they, they put so much attention to detail on what I did. And it's easy to work on, test points are labelled. All the cards are labelled. It's just really nicely done. You don't get this kind of detail and serviceability in mind in newer gear, you just don't get it. Um, you know, everything's plug in, so if you need to take a card out to check it, you can unplug it and just do it. I mean, you just don't get that these days. It just doesn't have the same kind of level of uh, serviceability anymore. But yeah, okay, I think I'll have to leave this one for now and, and get these caps out and, and check those out. I'm not doing any more right now. But uh, yeah, I need to sit, decide whether or not I'm replacing these, what I'm replacing them with. Um, I mean, I've got capacitors that are suitable ratings, maybe not suitable capacitances. Um, well, what's the biggest one I've got there? I've got some 15,000s, 16 volt. That might do one of them. <laughs> I've got this is a 5 volt rail there. Well, that was a big one, that wasn't it? But yeah, I do have some high capacitance caps here. Not many of them, but I do have some. I've also got some in my storage as well. 15,000, 35 volt. But again, these are soldering type. I'd rather replace like for like if I can. So get some screwing types if they're not horrendously expensive, which they could be. Especially at this kind of dimension. These are massive caps. So they could be quite expensive. What is this beast? This is a HP A672A um, 18 gigahertz signal generator. Or well, 2 to 18 gigahertz signal generator, I should say. Now, I do have a service manual for this, so I can actually identify what these caps are supposed to be from the manual. So that's nice. <laughs> But so there's more caps in a bag than what I can see here. So where are the other caps from? Maybe from a different piece of equipment. Hmm. Or you just have some stuff lying around and you gave them to me anyway. It's possible. Let's uh, look underneath this one here. This is another white one, like the one that looks like it's leaked. Polarities, do you think polarities matter? <laughs> Positive is that side. Are they marked on the board? Yes. So, 40 volt, 80,700. No signs of leakage. Might still be alright. It measured okay. 40 volt cap. Hmm. Quickly check on the other tester. See, this is measuring low. This is measuring 11,000. ESR is good though. Sorry, measuring high. Get it right. It's 8,700. That's very high. That's probably a bad sign. In fact, it's that high. 8,740 volt. Well, I've got 10,000. Thirty-five volt. That's an equivalent. 
but again it's a soldering type that's measuring nine so this is actually a better cap ESR is slightly higher that's 0 0.028 and what was this one again I've forgotten Zero point zero one five. So the ESR on this cap is actually slightly better, but the capacitance is down, or up significantly, I should say. Um, I'm suspicious about this cap drying out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to put this style cap in. I mean, it will fit. That will definitely go in there, but hmm. I don't know. I'd rather put the screwing type in there. Yes. Do I have a high voltage Chester? Uh, oh, TH. Okay. Billy Holiday is gone. He's dropping by if he's still hanging around. Now, I do actually have a tester. Um, I think I'm going to need to do that. This thing here, I made this. Um, it kind of works. <laughs> Haven't used in a while. Let's try it out. Yeah, because these are thready. Can I shove a connector into those holes? Not really. So this thing can put out, I think it was about 400 volts <laughs> maximum, all right? So, um, so it's a 40 volt cap, so I want to set this less than that. Let's do 39 volts. Right, so I've got this capacitor here out, which is a 40 volt cap, which is off the 20 volt supply rail. It's measuring high in capacitance by about 40% or so. Now this cap here is actually equivalent to this cap here, <laughs> interestingly. A bit of a difference in size, but let's do a leakage test on this and see what actually happens. So I've got my supply here set to 40 volts. This is a leakage test which I built uh, a few years back. So, let's try it. It will slowly come, it's a big cap, so it's gonna take a while to charge it. Now what I can actually do is crank it up and produce more current to speed the process up. This is gonna take a while. So let's leave it floating for a second there. The voltage is sitting there. It's not dropping off hard. So let's put a higher voltage in there. Like that will that'll get, generate more current. And we'll charge it a little bit quicker. Just watch that voltage there. It's going to take a bit to charge this up. Big cap. The idea is that when you get to a certain voltage, it will stabilize and then you better leave it on and it will just. We, the current should drop to almost nothing basically when you actually get a point where it's going to be stable. That's when you check the leakage. And this thing can't produce a particularly high current. So I'm just having to just try to force it to get there a bit quicker. I'm also trying to keep below that 40 volt limit. So we're halfway there in voltage. 
So if I let go, there you go, 19.8. Now, that, if I set this the same voltage here, um, you would see a stabilization. So I'm just trying to see if it drops down much. You will get a little bit of drop, but not much. It's not leaking too badly because I was at voltage be dropping quite a bit. So I'll come back once I've finished charging this up. Makes that's a PCB. It's the worst possible, isn't it? Count the old caps and replace them. Yes, possibly. I know people do do that sort of thing. So it's taking a long time to charge up. Of course, I could have actually just put this onto a high voltage power supply and actually just charged it with that and then put the tester on and then done it for that way. Would have been quicker. We're slowly getting there. I mean, this is rated for 20 volts, right? So it's going to be a 20 volt rail plus ripple. Um, as you can see, we get a certain voltage that starts to flash, that's dangerous. Um, so, plus AC ripple, wherever that's going to be, 1.4 volts more than that. So, yeah, 1.4 times peak voltage. So, we're about, you know, we're at basically the peak voltage level. So, this would be the voltage you'd be seeing. In AC, anyway, we'll drop this down a bit now. We'll try and give it a chance to stabilize. All right, so it's 32 point well, 33.2. Point seven, it's dropping slightly there. So even though I'm still trying to put a little bit of power in there because the voltage is slightly higher, we're not getting any leakage. So leakage is actually looking all right. Nothing really showing up there. Also, it's going to put a little bit in because it's all trying to charge, but. It's not horrendous. This is where it's stabilizing. There could be a slight voltage error here actually. I think there was a slight discrepancy between these two voltages. There's a little bit there I think, in variety. Let's we'll see it like this for a while and let it stabilize. Made in USA, well, yeah. Because it should get to a point where it's fully charged up, at least to that voltage that's being put into it, and it will stabilize. Then, whatever current is sitting on the display is the current it takes to maintain that charge level, which is then obviously the leakage current. So, we're actually still seeing creepage upwards slightly. So maybe it does have leakage after all.
yeah, still going up. So I think it does actually have leakage. Let's drain it. Make it safe again. It's taken a while. Yeah, so I think I need to replace these caps. Um, I mean, I'm not even sure when this thing was made. What's the sewer number on this thing? Can't see where it is. Two two zero eight, so nineteen eighty two. Made in nineteen eighty two, so it's forty years old. I mean, caps can't last that long, but usually when they get to this sort of age, I like to replace them anyway. Well, even like twenty years old, I like to replace them. Anyway, just keep discharging this thing. It's got a resistor inside it, so just run through that and load it down gently. It's not a huge load. Obviously, this thing took quite a bit to charge it up. Anyway, yeah, so I can't do much on this one today because I need the parts. Which is a shame. We should have gone for the DVD player. Open one up here. Yeah, I could make a mess, though, couldn't I? <laughs> it's taken ages to discharge. Probably burnt my sister up on here. I think I should have put a bigger resistor in this thing. I think it was a 5 watt I put in there actually. I don't know. It's just discharging rather gently. Shall I do it the exciting way? Shall we? Shall we do the exciting way? Here you go, it's discharged now. HP four two eight two A. Um, not familiar with that one actually. Whenever I find out a piece of test gear, like I like to look it up. Four two. Uh, I've forgotten it now. Hold on. Four two eight two A. I was to put HP instead of HO. <laughs> no, okay. Now I've got a. I do have an HP capacitance meter. Um, it's not that form factor. It's different style. I did one years ago. I think it's about five years ago. I did a video on that. Um, I've still got it. It's sat in the other room. Let's try and look it up now. You can see the voltage climb back up again as it's recovering. Um, electronics and repair videos. HP 4261A. That's what I've got. It's a 4261. Yeah, anyway. Right. Don't like the price as well, yeah, so I'm gonna to have to look at it here and figure out exactly what caps I need, what the spacing is between the screw terminals, that sort of stuff. And make sure it's all right. Yeah. Oh 
Oh, okay, 100 volt bias, and it can do pico amps, nice. I actually picked up a piece of test gear recently, like I mentioned at the very beginning of the stream. Um, it hasn't arrived yet. It wasn't cheap. It was way more than I actually wanted to spend, like probably three times the price. But I finally decided to get one because I saw one which looked like it was basically complete and in what looked like really good condition, at least from the photos. Sometimes it's a bit hard to tell. So we'll see how that goes. That's on its way. It hasn't left the USA yet. So it's going to be, you know, at least probably another couple of weeks before it turns up here. But that'll be a good video, I reckon. And if I'm lucky, it's as good as it looks on the photos. But, you know, you don't really know, dear. It could be anything. Right, well, I think that's that cap basically charged or discharged. So I think they're going to be very similar sorts of things, you know. I mean, this is great for doing small caps, you know, checking leakage on small caps. So these big caps, it's a bit of a challenge for it. Um, I don't use this very often. I rarely get it out. But uh, I did actually did a video on this. I did show building it and the construction. The circuit boards, I think I made those available as well. I think these are open source. Yeah, I think I made the circuit boards available on my uh, PC Ray page as well for the actual design of these. So I did do a project on these things and actually... It is on my channel from about four years ago, I think, something like that. So if you want to build one of these, you can. Anyway. That's a good clip, isn't it? And also the quick way to do that would be just to chuck it on the power supply, charge it up from the power supply, and then chuck the leakage tester on it, and um, then use that to do the final bit of topping up and testing. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. If these are horrendous prices, then it's quite likely I will just get one of these caps and solder it in. Because these are significantly cheaper. Um, I think these are probably going to be my guess would be thirty dollars each. That wouldn't surprise me. Hey Peter, um, and bank and Fetty, yes, yes. Well, I'm I'm definitely um, inclined to. I mean, gutting this would it be would it be that hard to gut that? Cut the top off. I've got the dribble tool here. <laughs> cut the top off. Solder this onto the terminals inside. <laughs> How messy is that going to be? Um, yeah, you can cut it off, solder it on, put the top back on again. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I'm not into that whole um, visually um, original aspects, really. Not on this sort of stuff. Some things, obviously, you know, you got antique radios, then yes, you want to try and maintain the aesthetic and keep it as original as possible something like this it really doesn't bloody matter to be honest um, you know this is just a capacitor which has got old um, what brand is this thing Sangand Sangand never heard of them see that I haven't even looked at that before no idea Miscellaneous or well, misapplication is hazardous. Yeah. Um, hmm. Type 500, what that means. Anyway, I think I have to do, uh, do this after the stream and figure out what this cap's going to cost and decide whether or not I'll just replace them with like for like or whether I bodge in some solder in type Sangamo is it a game? oh it's Sangamo yes is that an O instead of a D? yeah okay Sangamo still never heard of them can't sit a wall out like I dare you um, 
Yeah. <laughs> it probably fine. I mean, they, the leakage, well, the ESI looked okay. Capacitances didn't look horrendous. So it could potentially be okay. Potentially. Um, yeah, it could, it could be all right, but... Yeah. <laughs> it's waving. I don't think it's really going to tell me that much in this case because the capacitors is too big and they've been sitting around and they need reforming a bit too I'm sure but yeah I'm just thinking they're going to be past their life um, let me look at the manual for this what if I can find it this is a bit small Well, I can get some caps at the same sort of dimensions. Might better retain this original piece here for some reason. I don't know why it's even bothered with that. Maybe it's to help stabilize them so they don't move around too much. Maybe that's what it's done. Maybe. Anyway. Circle diagrams are in the back here somewhere. Um, I just have to find the right assembly. There's lots of diagrams. Individual cards. It's nice if I've actually got the board photos on one side like this, so I can actually see them. I don't want to show up on camera. I think it's a bit washed out. So that's one of the main logic boards there. There's another one. Power supply board. Must be maybe one of these other ones which are not folded out at all. All these connects are. This is going to be the very last one, isn't it? Here we go, his main board. We're getting close. Okay. Where's the main board layouts? So looking for C1. Yeah, C1, C2, C3, and C4. A3 board. These are the chassis layouts. Where's the actual diagram? I must have missed that one. Now you stand out the A3 board. That's all layouts. Two layouts. Come on, where's the A3? I'm trying to get backwards with it, so it's harder. Come on, because the way it folds. A3 layouts. Block diagrams and diagrams. Right. There's several diagrams for this ball. So, I'm going to have to sit down and figure these ones out. It's a bit messy. There's a few of them. 
That's the A3 A3 board. I'm confused by that. How many boards are called the A3 board? As the A3 A2 board. <laughs> oh dear. Is that a sub board? A3 A2. Okay, so they called that as a sub board. There we go. Here's they are marked right there. Okay, found them. So C1 is supposed to be 30,000, which is about what we got. C2 is supposed to be 42,000, sorry, 4,200. C1 is supposed to be 13,000, and C3 is supposed to be 8,700. Okay, and interesting. Okay, so the, the voltage across his caps is more than what it said on the board for the, what they actually are. So the C4 is up to 14 volts. C2 is up to 60 volts. C1 is up to 21 volts. And C3 is up to 35 volts. In fact, it's actually marked which one's which here as well. C1, C2, C3, C4. So C4 is a 5 volt cap. A well, five volt supply, and C4 has got up to 14 volts on it. Apparently, obviously that's pre-regulated. So, okay, so that's just saying what the rails are, not the voltages at those points. Trap for players there. Sixty-five pounds without VAT. Oh, jeez. It's in old adverts. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to. Uh, at least I can see what the values are without taking the caps out. I'll just measure the, the hole spacings, and figure out the dimensions I need for the screws. So look at the value. Look at the voltage rating. Look for the screws, and then see what I can find. But if it's significantly different price between a screwing terminal versus a soldering, I'll be getting solderings and making them work. Um, yes, that's what will happen there. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think that's going to be the end of that today. I think I was hoping to get another repair done, but uh, oh, we've got one done at least. That's something. And this one is half on the way. I've just got to figure out what I'm going to do with it. And that's alright. And most people have gone to sleep now anyway. <laughs> Down to what we were before. So most people have gone to bed because of the time zones over in Europe there. Right. I shall call it a day I think. And I shall go and try and source components for this and see what they look like for pricing. And go from there. Yes. Right, okay. Well, thanks everyone for dropping by and, and participating in the stream and having a chat. And, and I'll catch you later on. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll be getting anything.